it ain't there no more. I said, Lamar, what did you put in your ear? He said, uh, it was a fly. I had a fly in my ear. There was this guy named Lamar. Lamar was one of these type of dudes that was kind of slow. And when I say slow, he was kind of mentally challenged. Before we even go on with that, it, there's a lot of people that's in prison that do not belong in prison, that they need to be in like a psychiatric ward or something. And not because they crazy, it's because they really are like slow, like mentally challenged. And they have no business in there. Number one, because other inmates, other convicts will take full advantage of, the, of dudes like that. Whether extortion, having them crash out, um, making them steal something, taking advantage of their manhood, you whatever you can think of, that's what these dudes prey upon of these slow cats. And Lamar was one of them. To the point where for, Lamar was other cats entertainment. I guess they call it bidding on somebody. And um, Cass was bidding off of Lamar. Lamar was people entertainment. So one day Lamar come to me and he say, hey, Dante, could you look at my ear? I got something like a cut in there. So I'm like, I'm not about to be looking in your ear, man. He's a, he was like, no, man, for real, man. I, I feel like there's something in there. So I'm like, man, come here, let me see. So he turned his head this way and I'm looking. I said, it ain't nothing in your ear, man. He like, are you sure? Because I, I like, I feel like something moving around in there. I'm like, Lamar, you tripping, man. It ain't nothing in there. Okay. Now, remember, y'all, I told y'all they end up putting Lamar in my cell. I, make, I made a video maybe two or three months ago about Lamar, the dude that took on the Eddie Murphy um, persona, personality. This is the same guy, Lamar. So... I'm like, go put some water in your ear and just, you know, do like this or whatever. So he went to do that and he was like, man, something is in my ear. So I ain't paying him no attention. So all that day, I'm hearing him telling other people like, hey, man, could you look at my ear? Man, I said, so he going to the guards like, man, something's in my ear. Now, what I did not know is the day before Lamar was playing basketball, and I guess when he went up for a layup, somebody elbowed him and cut him right here. And y'all say, well, what that got to do with the cut in his ear? We finna get there. You remember I told y'all Lamar was kind of slow. Now, there was a cat that told Lamar that if you put some maggots in your ear, it'll eat the dead skin and heal you up faster. So y'all know where I'm about to go with this. Put two and two together. So somehow, some way, Lamar ended up having some flies and he put the flies like in his ear and did like this. Um, I don't know how long it took for the larva, the larva to hatch in his ear or whatever happened, but something happened where he had the flies in his ear and he kept it like that. Um, I don't know the anatomy of the ear canal, but allegedly a fly was stuck right there and he ended up pulling it out. Okay. Ugh. Now, before we go on, I need to ask everybody in the comment section something right quick. And please, please just answer the question. <sighs> Who do y'all think will win a fight since it's Halloween? Who do y'all think will win the fight? between Micah Myers and Jason. That's straight up. I just want to know in the comment section, Jason Voorhees or Michael Myers, who will win? And matter of fact, I'll make it even more better. If they both was in the room and they had no weapons, they, they was in a room that neither one can escape out of and it's them two. Who do y'all think will win that fight between Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees? Let me know in the comment section, okay? So, let's get back to the story. So now, Lamar, you know, he come over there, and it's like an hour before lockdown. And he like, oh, man, Dante, man, 
the guards, they they won't help me. Um, could, could you just please look one more time? So I said, man, come on, man. So I go over there and I said, let me see your ears. So I, I push them down like that and I'm looking. Now, I get real close up on it like this. And I see something yellow wiggle. It like popped up quick. And I'm like, what the heck? And I said, Lamar, what did you what you put in your ear? He said, oh, the other day, uh, I put a fly in there because I had a cut and it ain't there no more. I said, Lamar, what did you put in your ear? He said, uh, it was a fly. I had a fly in my ear. I said, come to my cell. Now, I had some peroxide and I poured a little bit in his ear. And when I did that, I put my, these fingers like right here. And every time the thing would pop up some, I had to try to grab it, but it had worm itself back down. So this was going on for about 15 minutes. And I finally got it. Like I got it. And it was a, a little baby maggot. And I, I know I got y'all creeped out. I know. I know I got y'all creeped out. I'm sorry. But I ended up getting it, and I was like, Lamar, man, what, why did, why would you put a fly in your ear, man? He was like, eh, I, I just cut myself, and, you know, this person told me that it had healed me up, and th that's why I did it. And so when I end up putting more peroxide in there, it started, you know, it started bubbling up. I tell y'all this, whenever, whenever he got the fly out of his ear, I guess when he pulled it apart half of the body was still in his ear and maybe that hatched um it because you know if you smash a fly maggots come out of it so i guess when he took the fly out of his ear a maggot came out and uh, it was there y'all think this is the end of the story uh-uh this just the beginning the beginning of the story so he leave out and now it's like 10 more minutes for lockdown. Boom. All I hear is, man, is something still in my ear? Now, Lamar was like four cells down from me. Man, is something still in my ear? Is something still in my ear? So his bucky like, man, shut up, man. Man, be quiet. Lamar like, man, no, something in my ear. Help me. Guards, help. So, if, listen, if y'all know Lamar, y'all know how belligerent and loud this dude get. He, he like, go crazy, like, for real. He get real loud, and he just get real animated. And, hey, so he like, man, guards, help me. Help, help me. Something in my ear. Help. Right? So, everybody on the tear. Like, man, shut up, man. Go to bed. Go to bed, man. And he's still a hollering. Help me. Something in my ear. Help. So the guards come and they come to his door. Like, what is you doing, man? Help me. Something in my ear. Help me. I need to go to the hospital. Now, the earlier, the, the guards that was on day shift let them know that Lamar was doing outbursts in the pod. So they already knew that, you know, they was already aware of the situation with Lamar, but they said that he was lying or whatever, but he wasn't lying because I actually pulled the maggot out of his ear. Apparently I didn't, apparently there was another maggot or two still up in his ear that I didn't get. So the guards pull him out, y'all, and they take him to the infirmary. Now, when he got to the infirmary, allegedly... I don't know this to be fact. I don't know this to be fact. <sighs> when they pull whatever in Lamar ear, a whole bunch of maggots came streaming out of Lamar ear. Little bitty maggots that start coming out of his ear. I was told that it was like greenish orange pus 
that's coming out of his ear. Oh, man. Just thinking about that just got me shaking right now, y'all. Y'all see my goosebumps? I got goosebumps. Oh, let me tell y'all something. Back in the day, they did say in early medicine that if somebody got a cut or got rotten flesh on them, that you can put maggots on there and it'll eat the dead flesh away. I heard that that is true. But in Lamar case, I don't know what that was all about. The whole point of this prison story is to educate people out there that might find themselves in prison that don't trust fellow convicts of with medical decisions on your life, especially when it's dealing with your ear canal. Because you put something up in your ear canal and it start moving around in there. And I, I know y'all feeling real nasty. Y'all like, oh, yeah. Something start moving around in there and it start eating the dead flesh. And when it felt like it ain't, it ain't ate all that it can eat, it might just keep going down and down. For the people that can't find the video of Lamar that I did two to three months ago, I'm about to play it right now, so stay tuned. This is the story when the cops put this Eddie Murphy dude up in my cell, y'all. His name was Lamar. Shout out to Lamar. So, boom, 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 boom. Dante, cuff up. Now, the reason why they told me to cuff up is because it's their policy. Whenever you get a new inmate in your cell, you got to stand up, turn around, back, up to the cell and get handcuffed and then walked, walked to the back of your cell until they unhandcuff your cellmate. Here's a bad thing. This is a side note, y'all. When you are handcuffed and facing the other way and that guy that comes into your cell, he get uncuffed, he can run up on you and bang you out, right? And hopefully the guards will stop him in time before you get mangled. But I've seen that happen before, but let's get back to the story. So I'm back there all handcuffed, hoping like, man, I hope they don't put no crazy person in my cell, man. So they tell me to come back so I can get uncuffed. And I'm looking at the dude. And I'm like, man, this is a weird looking cat, man. The black, look at this black dude. He looked like Norbert, um, Eddie Murphy, um, Norbert. That's what he looked like, but he was bald headed. So they uncuffed me. <laughs> so he's, he's standing there by the desk. I'm like, Oh, what's up, man? What's your name? He like, my name Lamar. I said, Lamar? He was like, yeah, yeah, my name Lamar. I said, what you went here for, Lamar? He was like, man, I don't even know, man. I said, how much time you got? He was like, man, they gave me a year and a day. I said, oh, okay. He was like, um, which bed do I get? Do I get the top of bunk? I said, man, you got to get the top bunk, man. Nah, you, you, you got to get the top bunk. He like, okay, okay, that's cool. So I'm trying to read this cat. I'm like, he don't look like he in here for no, I wonder if he in here for touching kids or something. Cause he just, I'm not saying that he just got that look, but he, <laughs> you could tell he was kind of mentally challenged and maybe he, cause there's a lot of people that's in prison and in jail that got mental issues and like real disabilities and they don't put these people in mental wars, they would send them to prison. So, oh, well, I, I'm gonna let y'all know off the top. Yes, he was in there on a bad charge. Um, but honestly, I really feel like he should have not been in prison. He should have been in some other type of, cause you could tell something was wrong with him, man. But anyway, um, he, so he get up at the top bunk and he done took on this Eddie Murphy person personality or whatever. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you all why. <laughs> Hold on, man. Hold on. Hold on. So he get up on a talk book. And I was like, so uh, what you do, man? He was like, ah, oh, man, it was just so much stuff, man. Um, I end up like my niece was sitting on my lap. And I was just holding her, and, you know, her mama freaked out on me, and I freaked out on her, and I beat up the mama. And um, 
the police beat me up and now I'm here. And I'm like, uh, I don't really know if I'm ready to buy that. But, you know, I don't know. But he just really seemed like he, he didn't have it, have it all. Hold on, y'all. My air conditioner just cut on. I was about, I, man, I thought my air, con air conditioner went out. Okay. So, y'all know how these um, air conditioners. Where you going, bae? Oh, yeah, I'm just recording the, uh, uh, the prison story. When I, you remember I told you about uh, that a dude named Lamar that uh, took on his Eddie Murphy personality? <laughs> yeah, I'm telling that story. So, so, <laughs> so hold on, y'all. My, my wife is taking out the garbage. And uh, I'm just letting it know that I'm making this um, prison story about when I was, met this dude that act, act like Eddie Murphy, which I'm telling y'all. By the way, y'all, y'all hit that like button for me, all right? Just hit the lean on the like button for me one time because y'all been slipping, man. Y'all been slipping. We need to hit 100,000K subscribers by the end of this year man um like this video share this video on facebook instagram tiktok twitter reddit whatever platforms y'all got okay i want to thank everybody that do be sharing my videos and sharing my content and also bless the paypal and the cash app but let's get back to the story so he up there and i said dude you kind of favor eddie murphy so he was <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> hold on, y'all. I'm trying to get my, my impersonation off. So, he's sitting up there on the bunk, and he was like, yeah, people do say I look like Eddie Murphy. And it, it, he he was getting the character. that he, he was like this. Yeah, people say I do look like Eddie Murphy. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> it's the way he did it, man. He was looking crazy up there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. See, y'all might don't think it's as funny as I do because y'all wasn't there. But so I'm like, yeah, you do got a, a funny Eddie Murphy person uh, impersonation. So me and him just talking and whatever the case is. So this is where this story take a hard left. So lights out now, y'all. It's nine o'clock. Lights out. So he up there. And he sleeps like, bam. He sleep instantly, boom, okay? Now, I look up there because he's snoring. And I'm like, man, no, nah, this ain't going to work. This ain't going to work, no. Nah. Hex, no. Nah. But I want y'all to pay attention to something. This man, like, <laughs> it was almost like he was a robot. Like somebody pushed the power button and then it was, his power just went out. That's how fast he went to sleep, man. But it's how he went to sleep also. Now, here's a prison rule, a prison tip. Um, unless you rock and roll this way, if you're a new inmate, you do not sleep on your stomach, okay? Do not have your face down, ass up, okay? Um, it's just a bad way unless that's how you get down if, if, if that's how you rock and roll like listen what do i tell y'all all the time okay i cannot tell another man how to program but if that's how you want to program and get your cheeks clapped well that's that's on you man so i i peek up there i look up there this dude face down ass up in the air and he's snoring. I'm like, no, nah, man, <laughs> this this ain't gonna work. So I get up off the bed and I'm like, hey, bro, hey. He like, uh huh. I said, hey, you gotta you gotta stop snoring. He was like, okay, I got you, I got you. And then he turned to his side and laid down. It was quiet for about five minutes, you know. So I'm laying down. Then he gets to snoring again. I'm like, I get up, hey, bro, wake up, man. He like, hey, hey, what, what's going on? I said, man, you got to stop snoring, man. He was like, I, I, I really can't help it. I said, man, hold on. So I went to my drawer and I got a sock. And I said, here, man, put this in your mouth, man. He was like, okay, okay. And this is why I said he had no business being in prison, man, because he was just too easily influenced. So I put the sock in his mouth. <laughs> so <laughs> you hear me, babe? I said, I have to put the sock in his mouth. 
So, cause he kept snoring. So I gave him a sock and he put it in his mouth and he just went to sleep. And that's why I said he had no business being in this prison, man. Cause he had mental issues. <laughs> so he's sleeping. It's about 2.30 in the morning now. And I hear, ah, ah. I'm like, man, at first I thought I was dreaming. And then I heard again, he was like, ah, ah. I'm, I'm like, I said, hey man, I, boom, boom, boom. I hit on the rock, I said, hey dude, what you doing? And he was, he leaned over, he was like, man, I had a bad dream. I had a bad dream. I said, dude, what are you doing? He like, I don't know, man. I, sometimes I'll be having nightmares, man. I, hold up, hold up. You are a grown man. You have no business having nightmares, man. What is what is going on? <laughs> hold on, y'all. Let me know in the comment section, y'all, if I'm wrong or I'm right. When the last time have y'all had a nightmare as an adult? Come to think about it, I had a nightmare too, but I didn't. I had a nightmare about two weeks ago, but I didn't wake up screaming. I'm talking about, he was like, ah, ah. so I'm like, dog, well, right, right. Then somebody might call the police. <laughs> so, uh, I'm talking to my wife. She said, I might want to keep it down. Somebody might call the police. Y'all know what type of neighborhood we in. So, so, uh, I'm, I'm banging on the rock, like boom, boom. I said, Hey man, what you doing? He said, I had a nightmare. I had a nightmare. I said, dog, man, hey, you can't be doing that, man. So then he was like, okay, all right. So then I go back to sleep or try to go back to sleep because he done threw, he threw my sleep all the way off and he back up there snoring like a baby. About maybe 20 minutes later, oh, 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 I said, man, oh, <laughs> oh no, this is not about to happen so he's doing this making these noises and other cats waking up like man what's going on down there man who is that who is that now at this time y'all he went into a full-blown tirade um <gasps> oh, 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 oh. he wouldn't stop so then i i hit up the guy out the bed and i was like guards guards hey y'all need to come get him man guards come get this dude so he really up there like, stop it, leave me alone, leave me alone, oh, and all this and that. The guards come running down there like, what you do? What you do to him, Dante, what you do? I said, I ain't do nothing to him. Look at him, man, he over there tripping. So they popped the cell and I walk out, I walk out of there. They like, hey, hey man, so he up there kicking. Oh, oh. So then they grabbing him, shaking him and he woke up, he was like, what, what's going on? What's going on? They're like, hey, what are you doing, man? <laughs> so he said, I, I was just, I was having a nightmare. I was having a nightmare. So, like I said, Lamar was up there hollering and screaming. And I'm like, yo, hey, man, what are you doing, man? Chill out. And he just kept screaming and hollering. So I jumped out my bed and I got to shaking him like, yo, wake up, man. And he was like, oh, oh, screaming and hollering. So then I got on the buzzer, guards, guards, y'all need to come get this dude. Come get this dude, guards. So eventually they came in and I left out the cell and they snatched him off his bunk and they took him to the hole. Okay. Now at this time, people was yelling down the tear like, yo, D, what's going on, man? What's happening? What's going on, man? I'm like, man, dude having nightmares, man. I don't know what's going on with dude. They're like, hey, man, what's up, man? I'm like, man, he, he gone now, man. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something. Lamar hollered all the way from my cell down to the tier, down the stairs, out the door, and at the elevators. Okay? Um, The reason why I'm even making this video is because I found out what happened to Lamar. Okay? And I actually kind of feel bad. Lamar ended up getting his life taken away from him. Okay. The guards say that he fell down and hit his head. I don't believe that. Okay. I'm just going to say rest in peace, Lamar. If anybody in his family is watching this video, I give my deepest condolences to you.
okay? I didn't I did not know Lamar for that long, but when I did um when I did meet him, he was cool, he was funny, and yeah, he did look like Eddie Murphy and he did take on the Eddie Murphy personality, okay? Um I think that they beat him and unalived him. I honestly think that they beat him when they got him in that elevator because he wouldn't be quiet. I think they beat him. I think they beat that man. Um, There's people that are locked up in prison that should not be in prison. And when I say by that, I mean, there's some people out here that got mental problems. And you could tell Lamar had no business being in prison for whatever he did, okay? And yes, he did have bad charges, but um, I'm not giving no excuses neither, but you could tell something was off about him. He should have been in a mental ward or something. He should not have been in a penitentiary, okay? Um, right now, it's like a, a high, it, it seems like, a lot of babies are born with autism. You see it everywhere. It's like autism is on the rise. Matter of fact, it's not just on the rise. It's, it's a full-blown motion. And I think Lamar, I know Lamar had autism. I know Lamar had a mental thing going on with him. And like, again, y'all, I'm not trying to make excuses for this man. Because like I said, if you touch a child or violate a woman, you're a piece of crap. But Lamar, at some degree, I do believe that he know what he was doing. But at the same time, I don't know if he could have controlled himself. I just don't know. But what I do know is... The prison guards, before I, I'm not going to put a blanket on all prison guards because some guards are cool, but a lot of them guards are demons. A lot of them guards are foul. A lot of them guards, they get disrespected. They have no honor in their house. Okay. Their kids don't listen to them. Their wives don't listen to them. They get they get disrespected. So when they come to work and they in charge of us of us inmates, now they got power and they rule with an iron fist. I'm gonna do some more investigation because this is personal to me about Lamar. This story is real personal because somebody sent me an article. They sent me an email after they watched my video about Lamar and they knew exactly who I was talking about. And when I opened up this email, it told me how they he ended up losing his life. Talking about he fell down and hit his head. Nah, I don't believe that at all. I don't believe it at all. So I'm going to do my own digging and my own investigations. I need for everybody to put aside something because I know how y'all think. I know y'all like, why he going so hard for a guy that had bad charges? Again, Lamar had a mental issue. Lamar, I believe, did not know exactly what he was doing when he did it. I'm not taking up for this man. It's just the time that I spent with this cat, I knew something was off. Um, he was like child, child for the people that don't that haven't watched that video. Lamar was like very childlike, like sure enough, he was in his thirties, but he was like a kid, a child. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. If you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you want to continue to show your support of the Dante Show Network, make sure you bless that Cash App and or the PayPal.
If you want your business or social media channel promoted, I charge $20 a video. Email me right here. Until next time, stay safe. She go downstairs while he playing 2K. She see this cup, big coffee mug. She walk up behind him. Knocked him right out. Now he all shaking, convulsion on the floor. This woman got down on her knees and blanked totally out. So the chick I got in the thumbnail, imagine you a nurse and you come home for doing 14 hours in the hospital. When you come home, you just want to get in the bed. You might even want to get in the shower. So when she come home and she go up her stairs, she hears some moaning noises coming from her bedroom. She open the door and who right there in the bed? It's her husband. And who is that? Her best friend. She's standing there. They don't even see her right here. The best friend on top of the husband, you know, doing what they do. So she back out. She go back downstairs. She go to the kitchen and she go get that sword of justice. But as she's standing there, she like, I just feel so betrayed. This is my man, my husband, and my best friend. So now it went from anger to sadness. So she put the knife down and she leave out the house. She sit in the car and she cry. Then she go back inside to the house and slam the door real loud, letting them know upstairs that she home. So they hurry up and get dressed and whatever going on. So she head upstairs and hey girl, hey, 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 right? She say, well, what you doing here? This is the woman, this is the wife, playing it off. She like, oh, man, your husband, he needed for me to look up for something in his office or whatever, but it, hey, girl, but I'm about to go. She said, okay. The husband come out all nervous, like, hey, y'all, what does she know? You know, that type, right? So she give him a hug, and he's like, you okay, baby? She like, yeah, I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay. I, I, I'm just real tired, I'm just real tired. He like, oh, okay, baby, you want me to make you something to eat or go get you something? Or um, you want me to rub your feet or something? You know, this him being guilty. She like, no, nah, I'm just gonna lay down. I'm just gonna lay down. He like, all right, well, I'm finna walk so and so out, all right? She like, okay. So she lay down. She grabbed her pillow, she hold it, she started crying, sobbing, really. So he walked old girl out and old girl like, man, that was close, man, that was close. He's like, yeah, I know, man, I know, but all right, baby, I'll check you out later. So he tap her on the butt and she leave. Now the husband, he go upstairs and he get in the bed with his wife. He put his arm around her and grab her real close, okay? They kind of spooning at this point. And she like kind of bump him like, not tonight, not tonight. And he like, well, all right, man, all right, whatever. So he get up and he leave and go downstairs in the living room and cut the PS4 on. Now he down there playing the PS4. And now that sadness done turned into anger. She like, this dude got the audacity to try to sleep with me after he just, so she said, okay, all right. So she go downstairs while he playing 2K. She see this cup. Big coffee mug. She walk up behind him. Boom! Bust him in the back of his dome piece. Knocked him right out. Now he all shaking, convulsion on the floor. This woman got down on her knees and blanked totally out. When the police eventually showed up, because of the neighbors 
heard this woman screaming at the top of her lungs when the police, well, let's listen to the voice recording of the 911 call and then we gonna get back to the story. Okay, and what's going on there? Uh, me and my boyfriend got into it last night. We was fighting and stuff, the police got called and he's laying by the front door, but he's not moving. So you do need an ambulance? He's not moving. Is he breathing? Can you tell? I, like, tapped him or whatever, and he was like, Argh. like, you know, so I just want somebody to hurry up and get here because, like, I don't know what's going on. How I went to sleep. He? He's 28 years old. And he's laying by the door. Like, like he's a knife in his back pocket or whatever. So, yeah, he was, it was, look, I, I was bleeding. Like, I got a big gash in, my, in the back side of my arm. When I tried to move him, he was very, very stiff, and his, his arms and stuff. Is now. This woman end up getting sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. Now this woman is feeling like she was robbed. She was done an injustice. This was like a Romeo and Juliet type of thing of uh, 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 killing the passion. You know, the defense tried to get her like she was not in her right mind. She was under insanity, but you know, the prosecutor presented a case saying, no, this was premeditated. And true enough, you could have just left. You could have just argued with him, put him out the house, or you could have left. But you did. You went downstairs, you picked up the coffee mug, and you boom, busted him upside his dome piece. And you took his life. So now she ended up getting that life without possibility of parole now this woman remember y'all she worked at the hospital she a nurse when she got to prison she wasn't used to them living conditions long story short there was this female guard I'm not gonna say her name but we all know hence the thumbnail y'all know where we going with this they wasn't giving these personal hygiene things to women like they supposed to gave it to them. From my understanding, women bleed once a month for like seven or eight days, I'm give or take, I don't know. So they need these tampons. Well, this one CEO guard was just on some BS and she would not give her the proper amount of tampons that she needed. You know, I ain't trying to get deep into it, but I guess she was a heavy bleeder. So for about two months, she'd give her maybe two or three tampons. So old girl was getting tired of it. Now, there was a lot of other things that was going on in between, between this certain CEO and this nurse lady that asked her husband out with the coffee mug. But if I tell y'all all that, this story would go on and on, and I know y'all retention is very low. Y'all probably already clicked off the video, but if y'all are still here, I need for y'all to say, put S-O-J in the comment section. If y'all are still here, put S-O-J in the comment section. What S-O-J mean is the sword of justice. All right, so one day, you know, she bleeding and she ain't got no tampons so she had to take a shirt and basically stuff it up there <sighs> what i'm about to say we gonna need this now the ceo that wouldn't give her the tampons did a double shift the night shift and the morning shift she asked her, I need some tampons. This is the prior night. I need some tampons. Didn't I already give you some? I need some tampons. Well, I can't help you with that. The lack of humanity, right? So she like, okay. So like I said, she put the stuff to her shirt up there and when the blood got on it, the next morning for cow town, for count time, the lady was doing the count. And at this time, you gotta come out your cell and stand in front while they doing the count. When she got to her, y'all, 
this woman not only put P on the shirt mixed with the blood, so it was kind of wet. When she got up to her, she had it like boiled up in the back of her hand like this. And when she walked up to her, she said, boom, got her all up in the mouth, all in the nose, all up in her eyes. I know a lot of y'all wondering, Dante, how in the heck you know this? How do you know this? If y'all follow me a couple videos back, I told y'all that inmates been reaching out to me. And there's people that have been locked up. A lot of female prisoners that have been locked up that have been released now, that reached out to me and they said, well, I don't feel comfortable on camera. So could you tell my story for me? And I'm like, cool, ain't no thing. So this is how I know this story. I got plenty. And when I say plenty, y'all, I mean, I got plenty of these stories for y'all. Many, many more. I need for y'all to do me a favor. It's the fall season. I need for y'all to go to Dante's store. It's a click link for merch in the comment section. Okay? And if y'all feel it real generous, y'all know it's almost Christmas time. Y'all can lean on that cash app. Or lean on that PayPal for your partner. Just, just one time. I don't care if it's a dollar or ten thousand dollars. All of it is all appreciated. Okay? Until next time, Dante love y'all and I'm out. If you don't show me your paperwork, see this right here? He like, man, what, what, what you, what's that? I said, man, you, you know what this is, man. You know what that is. I told a story a couple months back about my bunkie that was having dreams. And these dreams that he was having, he kept calling out a certain person's name by the name of Darla. Now... For the people out there that don't remember that story, a lot of people been emailing me because they found the story. And they asked me a question. They said, Dante, is it natural or unnatural for a man to want to lay down with an animal? And I said, um, that is very unnatural. Actually, to the point, somebody sent me an article about in Europe, they got these animal brothels that they trying to bring here in the United States. Now, I did not fact check this at all, but this is what was told to me. But I'm going to retell the story about Darla. People in the comment section, please do not spoil who Darla is, okay? Please do not tell people in the comment section who Darla is. Let people find out at the end. So, <clears throat> You know, when you get when you get a new bunkie, you don't know who it is, you don't know where they came from, you don't know what they charges are. All you know is that you gotta get up when the guards say cuff up, cuff up, go to the back of the cell, and you can look and see who it is. Okay. Now this cat that got in my cell, he was a white guy. Dude maybe was 35, 36 years old. When he came in, you know, I sized him up. He didn't look like no threat. So cool. I came back to get unhandcuffed and I let him know, yo, you got the top bunk. This is your locker. This is my locker. Don't touch nothing of mine. When you use the bathroom, make sure you sit down. Now, before we go on, I know y'all like, come on, D, why you making this man sit down when he pee? It's not no military mind game tactic while I'm making this man, no suggesting to this man, because he have a choice whether to do it or not. I'm suggesting aggressively to this man to sit down when he pee, because if y'all don't know or not, 
when you pee in the toilet, pee splashes out and it can get all around the commode, okay? And I kept my cell spotless, okay? So I just let them know, like, you know, this ain't on no funny business or nothing like that, but you're going to have to pee sitting down. So he said, all right, now I explain to him why. I let him know every Thursday, well, every other Thursday is commissary day. So at this time we have, y'all know back in school when we had to take the, like, the tests and we had to bubble in whatever we wanted. So I was showing them how we did it because today was Wednesday and tomorrow was commissary day. So I told him, you know, this is how we do it and, you know, giving him the rules of the sale. Now, the first night, everything was okay, you know, except for, you know, he kept tossing and turning up there. Now, before he went to bed, I told him, I said, hey, I forgot to tell you. Now, if I can't tell another man how to program, but in this cell, if you got a fart, you're going to have to get off your rack, go to the cell, turn your back, and blow out the cell, okay? That's just, <clears throat> just that silly etiquette, okay? And I also told him, you know, I don't know how you get down in that area, but you never... You never bang one off in the cell. That's a no-no. What you do, you go to the shower or you wait till I'm gone and you put the white sheet up. Matter of fact, don't even do it in this cell at all. Just go to the shower if you're going to do that. So later on that night when I heard, the reason why I'm telling y'all that is because I heard him up there tossing and turning. And I'm going to say maybe around midnight, he was saying stuff like, Darla, Oh, darling, just hold it there, hold it there. Now I'm laying down and I'm like, man, what, what is, what is he talking about, darling? At first I thought he was sleep, you know, talking in his sleep. Oh, let me know in the comment section. Do y'all talk in y'all sleep or no? Nah? Let me know in the comment section. So I heard him. He was like, darling, darling, just hold on, hold on. So I was like, boom, boom, boom. I hit the, I hit his rack. I said, hey, man, what you doing? He ain't say nothing. So it was real quiet and he was like, hey, darling, darling. I said, hey man, wake up. He was like, oh, what's going on, what's going on? I said, man, you up there talking in your sleep, man. He was like, oh, oh, my bad, my bad. I'm sorry, man, I'm sorry, man, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. So he laid back down and he went to bed. Now, after that, me and him had no issues throughout that night. So the next morning, you know, hold on, y'all. Mm. Mm, this ice water, it ain't nothing better than ice water. Y'all see, I got the D logo too. Mm. Sorry about that, y'all. So the next morning, I wake him up for breakfast and I, I told him like, hey, listen, Whatever you don't want on your tray, just let me have it, okay? At this time, this breakfast tray had two boiled eggs, some Texas toast, and some, um, what was that? Um, some frozen apples. I love the boiled eggs, okay? So, we went down to the, uh, to the lunchroom or the, or the chow hall or whatever. We got our breakfast and he, he hit me off with his Texas toast and his bread. I mean, his, his Texas toast and a boiled egg. So we chopping it up. Now, you don't supposed to ask your celly what he is in there for. You That's disrespectful. However, if you are in a cell with somebody, they could be in there for the most vile thing that you can think of. Um, and I was just curious, so I just asked him. I said, Hey, bro, let me ask you something. He was like, what, what's going on? I said, let me ask you something. He like, what's up? He leaned forward. I said, hey, what you in here for? He like, oh, uh, I, don't, I don't really want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I said, okay, okay, all right, whatever. So we, we go back to the cell. Now, ain't nothing happened. Nothing eventful actually happened um, throughout that day. You know, just the regular jail stuff. 
Now, we're going to fast forward to bedtime. So he on top of his rack. I'm down here reading my Bible. And um, he ended up going to sleep. So I read a couple of more chapters of Genesis. So then I ended up laying down. I'm going to say about 1 o'clock in the morning. I hear, ooh, ooh, hold it right there, darling. Ooh, ow, ow, a darling, darling. Now, I'm like in a daze. You know, I'm like laying on my side. And I'm like, man, I thought I was dreaming at first. But then he got louder like, oh, darling, darling, oh, darling. I said, I said, what is he, what is this dude doing? I'm like, hey, he ain't say nothing. He was like, oh, darling. I was like, hey, man, what you doing up there? Then it got quiet. I'm like, man, but what, who is this darling? But who is this darling? Is, is, this, is this his wife that he, you know, having a wet dream about? I mean, who is this darling person? So I get out the bunk and I'm, now I'm looking at him like, man, what is he doing? So now he turned face, he facing me, but he sleep. And then he get like in a fetal position and he like, oh yeah, darling, darling. So I touched his shoulder like, hey man, wake up. He was like, what, what, what's going on? I said, man, who is Darla? He was like, well, what, 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 what you mean Darla? I said, man, you keep on talking about Darla and, and you saying it like in a nasty manner, man. Like, what, what's up with you, man? Who the heck is Darla? He like, oh, oh, man, oh, uh, oh, oh, uh, uh, he was still in the day. So he like, oh, oh, uh, she, uh, no, just, that, that it's just somebody I know out, out on the outside. I said, hey, man, what you went here for, man? He like, man, I ain't, I ain't in here for, man, I, 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 I told you, man, I don't, don't want to talk about it, man. I don't want to talk about it. I said, man, if you went here for something that's dealing with some kids, we going to have an issue, man. He like, no, 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 he, he got nothing to do with no kids, man. I'll let you see the paperwork, but not, not right now, man. I'll I, I, I show you them out. I'll show you them out. I, I, I'll just show you them out. I'm going to go back to sleep. I said, hey, man, you need to chill out, man, making all that noise, man. I'm trying to sleep, man. You know we got to get up at 6.30 for count, man. He's like, I know. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, man. I'm, I'm sorry, man. I'll I, I keep it down. I said, all right, man. So then I get back in the bed and I lay down. It's about 3 o'clock in the morning. And I hear him tossing and turning up there. And I hear like a noise. And I'm like, man, I know dang well he ain't up there. But I jumped up off the bunk. I said, hey, man, what you doing? And he turned, he looked at me. He was like, huh, what's going on? So I grabbed his cover off to make sure he wasn't doing what I thought he was up there doing. He said, what are you doing? I said, man, you better not be up here playing with yourself, man. He said, no, man, I'm just asleep. I said, what is you up here doing, man? He like, I I'm not doing nothing, man. You tripping. I said, listen, man, you're going to have to get up out this cell, man, because this ain't going to work, man. You you up here doing too much, man. You doing too much. He like, man, I... Man, I, I don't know what you, what you want me to do. I said, you up here talking in your sleep, man. You keep talking about somebody named Darla, man. You up here making weird noises, man. You got to you gotta stop that, man. You you ruining my sleep, man. He said, okay, I heard you. I heard you. Now, at this time, my voice is real elevated. He done took me to my higher voice. And dude's waking up like, hey, man, D, what's going on down there? I'm like, man, ain't nothing going on. They're like, man, what, man, what you down there doing to the white boy? I'm like, man, I ain't doing, man, he ain't here talking in his sleep, man, I can't sleep. So, he like, man, just, man, I, man, I'm going to be quiet. So, somebody down until like, man, put a sock in his mouth. Put a sock in his mouth. So, I'm at, listen, it wasn't that serious to me to put no sock in this dude's mouth. But, I have put a sock in somebody's mouth before because he was running his mouth. But, this didn't warrant that. So, he laid down, but he laid back down and got back in the bed. And I'm like, hey, um, in the morning, I need to see that paperwork, man, for real. I got to see that paperwork. He like, all right, man, I, I'm going to show you the paperwork tomorrow. Now, tomorrow comes. He ended up going to talk to a counselor. He left his locker open. So what I did, I went in his locker found his paperwork and I'm reading through it 
I look at his discovery. I'm looking at his charges. And at first, when I look at his charges, I was I was kind of confused. Because I'm looking at it, I'm like, man, he ain't here for domestic violence, uh, abuse of an animal, a dog? I'm like, man, what is this? So then I hear him talking down the tear, so I hurry up and put the stuff back in his locker. Now, in my mind, I'm thinking he in here, you know, for abusing a dog, domestic violence on an animal or something like that, because that's all I've seen. But it was some other literature in there that I couldn't comprehend what it was. So he come in there. I said, hey, man, let me see your paperwork. He was like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you see it tonight. I'm going to let you see it tonight. I got something to do. I was like, all right, man. Now, he leave out the cell. I go hit the yard. One of my homeboys was like, man, Dante, what was happening last night, man? Like, what, what, what was going on down there? I was like, man, my bunkie, man, he keep on talking in his sleep, man. He keep on mentioning somebody named Darla and... You know, he was like, what, you he in here on some kitty stuff? I'm like, no, I don't think so. I was looking at his at his paperwork when he went to go see the counselor, and it said something like dog abuse, animal abuse or something. He was like, animal abuse? What? That's kind of weird. I'm like, yeah, that is kind of weird. Hold on, y'all. Water break. Mm. Y'all got to stay hydrated. Mm, hold up. Mm. Oh, that's some good water. Hit that like button, y'all, and stop playing military mind games. So, next thing you know, um, we get off the yard. And I see the white dude talking to another white guy. My bunkie talking to another white guy. So, I, I, I kind of hear the conversation. I'm easing over there. And I hear him like, yeah, man, you, you, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get in the cell with you, man. I'm, I'm gonna try to get transferred. That's why I was talking to the council so I can get transferred. Cause you know my bunk, he be tripping, he be tripping at night. So I, I hear him. So I'm like, okay, good. Dang, I ain't got no problem with that at all. So later on that night, we in the cell. It's lock up time. So I'm like. So you gonna show me your paperwork or what? He was like, nah, nah, I'm a, I'm getting a, um, a cell change tomorrow. I'm gonna um, get another cell with somebody else. So I don't think you should be, you know, in my business like that. I'm like, man, let me see your paperwork, man. He like, no, man, I'm not gonna show you my paperwork. I said, I'll tell you what, man. I'll tell you what. If you don't, Show me your paperwork. See this right here? He like, man, what, what, what you, what's that? I said, man, you, you know what this is, man. You know what that is. If you don't show me your paperwork right now, you ain't leaving out of this cell. He was like, man, what, 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 what you doing, man? If you don't get your paperwork right now, you ain't leaving out of the cell. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something. For, the, for those out there that's wondering, Dante, you really was going to poke that man because he didn't show you his paperwork? No. This was a military mind game. I had no intentions on poking this man unless he was going to retaliate with some aggression towards me. This was a military mind game tactic. It's one of them things where, well, I see he got the... The blade pusher, the sword of justice, is he going to use it on me or not? Let me just show this man my paperwork. And it worked. So he said, okay, man, okay. So he showed me the paperwork and I'm reading through it. I said, man, what's up with this domestic violence and dog stuff? He like, man, man, I, uh, I, I, man, listen, I was, uh, Man, somebody lied on me, man. I said, what they lied on you about? Somebody said I was abusing my dog. I said, that's why you ain't here for abusing a dog? He was like, yeah, yeah, it, it was, it, I was abusing my dog and you know, they, they done gave me this time for, you know, domestic violence toward on a dog and some other crazy stuff. 
I said, oh, now I'm looking at this paperwork, y'all, and it's about 10 pages, but page six is missing. So I'm keep looking, y'all know on the bottom of the pages when you got multiple pages or something that's connected, say page one, two, three, four, five, six, page six was missing. So I'm like, hey, where, where page six at? He was like, oh, 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 oh my, my, my bad, man. I forgot. It's, it, it's over here. So I said, well, wh what's on it? He was like, oh, 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 man. All right, man. All right, all right. Here, here, here you go. Here you go. So he went to the locker and gave it to me. I'm reading it. I'm reading it. Now I'm double looking. Guess who Darla was? Darla was his dog. And guess what he was in here for? He was in there. He was out in the real world having relationships. A relationship with his dog. And somebody reported him. Not only did they report him as further investigation went. It was actual photos and videos of this dude doing things that he had no business doing with Darla, which was his animal. Now, I understand that animals are human property, okay? They have no rights, but it's, it's, it, there should be a line that's drawn that, I mean, you know what, as I'm talking about this, we are in 2023 where right is wrong and wrong is right. So, I mean, since 2020, we done entered the twilight zone. So I guess it's not really unusual for my silly to be in a full-blown relationship with an animal. Me? I tell y'all I can't tell nobody how to program. But I don't think I want to mess with no animal. And do y'all remember in the beginning when I told y'all that in Europe, they got these brothels with animals in there? And they trying to bring that here in the United States of America. <sighs> That's sick. Terrifying. But, hey, we are here. And this is it. I'm out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. If you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you want to continue to show your support of the Dante Show Network, make sure you bless that Cash App and or the PayPal. If you want your business or social media channel promoted, I charge $20 a video. Email me right here. Until next time, stay safe. So I was like, nah, you ain't got to call the police, man. I got the car back. No harm, no foul. I told the two white dudes to get on the body. Shout out to Columbus, Ohio. That great 614. Now, this story takes place in Ohio, Columbus. Now, I just got this Mustang. This Ford Mustang. GT. Drop top. Me and my homeboy, Al, we decided to go to Hollywood Casino. And that's on the west side. We get to the casino and we just hanging hanging out in the parking lot, just you know, just just talking. And this short dude, it's really it, I, I don't want to be rude or disrespectful, but it was a dwarf that walked past us. And I know, I know, I know Dante be comical and funny in his videos, but I'm dead serious, y'all. This is no cap. It was a dwarf that walked past us and he was mean mugging us. He, it was a white dude. It's like when he emerged from the right side, because me and my homeboy was like in the back of my car talking, like leaning. And when he pulled up, he pulled up in a yellow Hummer. So, and he was maybe about five cars that way. So when he got out and he started walking towards us, man, he was, I don't know what me and Al was talking about, but we just got quiet. And he was just mean mugging this man, but he, he looked real strong. And uh, when he walked past, man, and listen, I ain't, listen, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm not trying to be rude, but there was a tickle that was inside of me. 
And like simultaneously, me and Al just bust out and start laughing. So dude come back like, is this something mother effing funny? Is this something mother effing funny? So <laughs> now I ain't gonna lie, y'all. Dude was built like dude arms was solid, his chest was solid, his head was he had a bald head, and he looked like if he gets you on the ground, it's a wrap. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> Al being the hot head he was, he gonna pull his pants up, like, man, what's up, man? What's up? Calling him a Oompa Loopa. What's up? What's up, Oompa Loopa? What's up? So I'm pushing Al back like, no, man, chill, <laughs> chill. Cause this dude might end up beating both of us down, man. <laughs> so he like, he like, yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. So he got to walking off and he went on in the casino. So me and Al just laughing about it. I was like, man, what if he would have just whooped us, like beat us bad out here, right? So I was like, he might would have beat Joe, eh? but he wasn't going to beat my ass. I said, all right, because hey, that dude look like he can grapple. He'll get you to the ground and just do you bad, right? You might can get him with the, you know, uh, exchanging jabs because of the height difference, but dude probably would scoop you and like shimmy his way up on you, wrap around your neck like a King Cobra or Anaconda and put that grip of death on you. So... We just laughing about that. So we eventually end up going going to the casino. Now, when I go to the casino, I only, I don't mess with the slots. I don't mess with the craps. The only thing I do is play blackjack. I love me some blackjack, man. I, Hey, I, I guess down on blackjack. So we in there, I think I have maybe about 200, 220, 200, $200. And, um, you know, I was getting, they had the $10 tables, the $20 tables, the $50 tables, the $100 tables, right? So I was at the, I think the $20 table, the minimum bet you can bet. So I'm out there and, oh, I forgot to tell y'all, I did not put my top back on my Mustang. I left it down because it was the summertime and I didn't have nothing, you know, in the council or nothing. It wasn't nothing, nothing for nobody still. So keep that in mind. So, you know, um, let me tell y'all something about gambling. So I'm at the I'm at the table, right? First hand, first hand. Now y'all can do insurance bets, and y'all can do side bets also. And a side bet, I think I put like twenty five on my hand. And then the side bet, something told me, something told me, Dante put a hundred on the side bet, man. So the side bet came out two queens. Well, I end up getting two queens, right? And if you win on the side bet, you get th that money too. Why y'all, I hit blackjack the first hand and only put $5 right there, man. Oh, so all together, I think I made, what, 20, 40, 60, 60, and that side bet was like 50, 50%, 50 so 60, I think I got about $110 off that play, man. The reason why I say that, y'all, if y'all gamble, and I highly suggest people don't gamble, but... um. If you feel it in your gut, man, don't be scared, all right? Make that bet. Anyway, so we in there. We in there for about, about two hours. And I hear Al. Now, Al be at the crap tables. That's what he like to do. So I hear Al, like, arguing. So I'm like, man, what is he over there doing? So I look over there, and Al over there arguing with, with Shorty. With, with 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 the little dude, with the dwarf dude, and I don't know what they, I don't know what um the exchange room was about. I don't, I don't know. All I know, they squaring up <laughs> about the <to> fight. <laughs> and security is like getting in between them and stuff. So I go over there and I'm like, man, come on, Al. He like, man, no, man, f that, f that. He got a problem with me. He got a problem. I'm like, man, Al, come on, man, let's go. 
So I'm grabbing Al and security like, man, y'all got to go. Y'all got to go. Right? So we basically get pushed out of the casino. So we leave out. Now, we going down the aisle that I parked at. When we get to the aisle, I'm looking like, where's my car? Maybe it's on the other side. So we walk over there. So I get the chip chip, you know, the key, the key fob, and I hit the button and I don't hear nothing. And I'm just looking. And I, you know, when you put something somewhere and you like, nah, wh where the heck is my car? My car is gone. So I'm like, man, Al, somebody stole the car. He like, man, stop playing. I said, man, we parked right here. Cause that's dude Hummer right there, the yellow Hummer. He like, oh, somebody did steal the car. It, it was another car parked right there in my parking space. So I'm like, man, what the heck? He like, oh man, so I'm like, man, hold on, we gotta, uh, we gotta go back in the casino. So we go back in the casino. Security, like, we told Charlie, I'm like, listen, somebody stole my car. I need for y'all to run the camera back and all this and that. They talking about, no, nah, this, we, you all gonna have to call the police and y'all gonna need a warrant and all this type of crazy mess. So we end up going outside and they like, so now at this time, they security car coming. I don't call the police because I had to call the police to make this report. So they basically tell me, y'all got to get off the premises. So we like, yo, we waiting for the cops. They like, man, listen, y'all got to go. Y'all already was causing a disturbance and all this and that. And I ain't talking about your car stolen and all this and that. They weren't trying to hear that. So we had to, they basically pushed us off the property. So we standing across the street. I think it was a uh, um, Popeye's. I think it was Popeye's across the street or Wendy's. I think it was pop. No, it was a Popeye's right here in the Wendy's right there. We was in the Popeye's parking lot waiting for the cops to come. So when the cops got there, they asked him this questions like, so this, so that. I said, I got to give the make, model, and description of the car, this and that. So they ended up giving us a ride to the bus terminal. So well, when I say bus terminal, I mean the Greyhound. So we sitting there at the Greyhound station because... We were just there visiting. And, um, oh, I can't tell y'all this part. I can't tell y'all this part because I'm in a relationship now. Well, you know what? My wife don't even watch my video. So, anyway, so, uh, we got the Greyhound and, um, I'm mad. I'm mad because at this time, y'all, we was living in Detroit and we were just down in Columbus messing around. So, we end up, now at this time, I might had because I won a lot. So I think I had about, I didn't win a lot. I think I had about $400 now at the gambling. And Al had like a hundred or something. So we got hungry. So we ended up um, getting bus tickets to co go back to Detroit, whatever. And we got hungry. So we started walking around. So we found a church's chicken. Now, this is where this story is about to get real crazy. So, I see this, the manager, right? Uh, this light skin and short, super thick woman, right? Uh, oh, how old was I? I my age got to play a big, um, it, it plays a part. I think I was, I think 22 or 23 at this time. I think 22. Maybe 23, I'm not sure. But this chick was like 45 years old. But she was bad. Bad to the bone. So, um, you know, I'm all against the window. I done ordered my two-piece and a biscuit with um, gravy and mashed potatoes and macaroni. And I had to get the jalapeno um, peppers. Oh, let me know in the comments section, y'all. Is y'all rocking with KFC, Popeye's? Bojangles or Chick-fil-A, whatever. Let me know in the comment section which one y'all rocking with. So, you know, I ordered my food and I'm looking at it because she was like, boom, 
room back there. So, um, I was like, I, I forgot even her name. I want to tell y'all her name anyway, but if she see this video, shout out to you. So, um, you know, I asked her, her name and she was like, can't you read this right here on my, my name tag? Right. And it was busy. So, but I just had to have that. So, um, I asked her, I was like, what did I say? I think I asked for her number or I said something that made her laugh. And she gave me her number. Um, so I ended up getting her number. We got our food and we went to the terminal. Oh, oh, that's what it was. That's what it was. Y'all. It was, I asked her what time she got off and she was like, like 11 o'clock or something, but she the store manager so she can leave early if she want to. And I told her like, you know what happened? Like somebody stole my car and we about to go back to Detroit. And she was like, she had dropped us off. That's, that's what happened. So we went back to the Greyhound station and exchanged the tickets back. So we was just chilling in the Greyhound station. So she got off. Now, when she got off, she came and picked us up. Now, this is where it's about to get crazy, y'all. So she picked, she, she picked us back. She picked us up uh, from the Greyhound station. And I'm in the front seat, Al in the back seat. And we did drive. And I'm telling her, like, yeah, man, we was at the casino. And, um somebody stole the car and she was like yeah man it's crazy she said yeah the west side is crazy you know you got the bottoms and hilltop it's crazy um so she ended up calling a home girl for al and you know we end up going to her crib but she said she'd just take us to detroit tomorrow because detroit only three hours away from columbus so we in there and um we at her house and I'm just gonna keep it real with y'all. Long story short, me and her got out from like eleven thirty PM to maybe about one o'clock in the morning. I'm talking about yeah, Dante put that work in. That's all I'm gonna say. I I put that work in. So, uh, by the way, y'all hit that like button, man. Stop playing military mind games. Come on, y'all hit that like button. So, we end up doing what we do. I end up going to sleep. She end up going to sleep. Um, The next morning, we got up. I jumped in the shower, put on the same clothes. Crazy, right? And uh, we, me and her just talking. We talking laid up in the bed. And she was like, uh, what time you want to get dropped off? And I said, shoot, we can leave now, whatever. Why? Why? As we leaving out. Now, remember, now I forgot to tell y'all, she stay on the east side. She stayed in, um, what's the name of them apartments? Um, all right. Anybody from Columbus, Ohio, uh, y'all, y'all can help me with this. You not Easton. Eastland Mall. Okay. There's these apartments, Walnut Glen. That's where she stayed at. Walnut Glen Apartments. And y'all know apartments that's across across from Walnut Glen. Now then was the projects. So um we end up leaving out of Walnut Glen. We bust that right, make that next right to get up on the highway, because Eastland Mall is right here to the left, and then you go up that hill then. You know, you could jump on the highway. And um right there, it's it was a club, like right here to the right. Why my car? My car is right there. Right there. Guess who's in my car? It's two white dudes. You say two white dudes. You sure you sure it wasn't they car? I mean, it is a Mustang. It was two white dudes that acted black. Y'all remember that dude from Malibu Most Wanted? Yeah. I think they call these cats. Um, I'm just describing what these two white dudes look like. Um, nowadays, y'all call these cats the Kia boys. These teenagers that be out here stealing Kias and cars. So these two white teenagers that obviously had a splash of hip hop on them. They right there, 
in the parking lot talking to some chicks. I was like, that's my car. That's my car. She pull over there, right? Me and Al jump out immediately, hands on, activated. Man, I grab the door with my car. Two had him, I am against the hood of the car. Al had the other dude hemmed up. The girl screaming, oh, let them go, let them go. Man, you got my car. Now, I, ain't gonna, I can't tell y'all due to YouTube laws and regulations, but I pulled something out and I had that thing cuffed under his rib cage, letting him know at any moment that thing can go, right? He like, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, man. I said, man, how did you get my car? He like, man, uh, somebody gave me this car. Somebody gave me. Now, remember, y'all had my key. So all I'm thinking is like, how did they steal the car? Now, um, I don't have... Okay, so these cats got these, um, like this computer module thing that can read codes. And I guess when you pull back this lever right there by the, um, by the gearbox, you plug it in there and you can hot wire the car with, I don't know, these, this new technology with these cars is crazy. So that's how they end up getting the car. But, um, they basically said, it's a they, they gave they spilled all the beans they told everything basically it's a crew that operate in the bottoms on the west side in columbus that be sending cars nice cars like that and um they rent them out or they sell them like two thousand fifteen hundred dollars stuff like that so we end up getting the car. The chick was like, man, that's crazy. And this and that. And she was like, you want me to call the police? I said, no. Nah. So I was like, no, nah, you ain't got to call the police, man. I got the car back. No harm, no foul. I told the two white dudes to get on up out of here. And um, the church's chicken chick, I told her like, you know, I'll be back. Um, I'll, be, I'll probably be back down here in about two weeks. And so we gave each other a hug. Me and Al jumped in the Mustang and we got up out of there and got back to Detroit. So, um, yeah, that was the story when Dante got his Mustang stolen. And with that, I'm out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. If you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you want to continue to show your support of the Dante Show Network, make sure you bless that Cash App and or the PayPal. If you want your business or social media channel promoted, I charge $20 a video. Email me right here. Until next time, stay safe. Stuff out going through everything, sticking their hand through your peanut butter. All that, man, going through my mail. I'm talking about throwing my mattress out, throwing everything everywhere, dogging me out. What's up, y'all? So in prison, you got prison snitches, okay? You would think that since you in prison that dudes won't be snitching on you. Oh, they will snitch on you. I'm tell y'all about a time with this prison snitch told on me about me having a cell phone but thank god i got rid of it before the people came and shook my cell down so i ended up getting a cell phone at that time it was going for 1500 it was it wasn't y'all remember them phones um the flip phones the razors by sprint it was one of them cost me 1500 so i end up having my girl put 1500 on this dude cash app and um i ended up getting the phone and the phone came with a charger too now they ended up putting this white guy in my cell this older white guy um at this particular time y'all um i was real chilled out in fact, I just came from the hole, from doing, I think about two months in the hole. So I didn't want no trouble. I didn't want no problems, but I had to get on that phone. So I got me a phone. So anyway, so I'm in a cell, white dude coming in, older white dude. 
looking at him, he looking at me. He like, hey, um, you think I can get the bottom bunk? Cause it's kind of hard for me to climb up and climb down. You know, me, I'm young, I'm fit. I'm like, you know what, go ahead. You got it, you can have it. So cool. So I get my stuff, put it on the top rack. Now show him where his locker had to put his stuff at. At this time, y'all, we didn't have the lockers. Hold on. We didn't have the lockers where, oh, that car looks suspicious like a mug over there. Hold on. All right. So the lockers we had was like high school lockers in our sales. We didn't have like the suitcase lockers. We had like the lockers that's attached to the cement wall. So I'm showing him, I'm like, yo, this your locker right here. This, that, this, and that. I said, by the looks of it, I know you've been locked down before, so I already got to tell you what you need to do and what you shouldn't do up in the cell, right? He like, yeah, 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 that's cool, that's cool. I said, but just in case, let me just let you know, don't ever touch my stuff. Um, Don't ever go through my mail, okay? Because I keep my mail on the desk right there. So I said, don't ever go through my mail. If you need, if you need something, just ask me. Don't ever take nothing from me. Ask me. Right? I said, when you use the bathroom, make sure, make sure you put this sheet up. Okay? Now, the reason why I told him to put the sheet up, because I don't want to see you doing your business, especially if you're doing your number two. So I had this white sheet that I spread it from here to there. Okay. I had this white sheet up that it was connected to the toilet and it go over there by the desk. So all you have to do, if you're gonna sit down, you just put it up and connect it. Boom, no sweat. Um, I told him like, since you got the bottom bunk, if you gotta pass gas or something, man, you gonna have to get up out that bunk and turn your back to the cell and blow. Cause um, it ain't happening up in here. So he said, all right, cool. And oh, yo, oh, and also um, when it comes to your commissary, you gotta make sure you put it in my locker. Now, hold on y'all. This wasn't no extortion stuff. It's cause we had rats. We had an infestation of rats up in um, this prison. So I told him like, in a way I had my my locker, it was sealed tight. So no rats can get in it. So I said, you wanna put your stuff in my locker. And when, he, when I said that, he looked at me crazy. I said, no, I ain't like that. And I explained to him like I explained to y'all, right? And I showed him like, you know, I'm gonna keep my stuff over here and your stuff right there, right? So cool. Now, me and him in the cell together for about four months. Usually, I get on the phone when he leave out. So, we end up getting on lockdown. It was an annual lockdown, y'all. So, we in this thing. Maybe about two weeks, we gonna be up in here. But I need to get on this phone. So, I wait for about three, four days. And um, I bust out the phone when he, when I think he's asleep. So while he in there sleep, I'm on the phone talking to my girl. But I'm keeping the noise real low because I don't know this dude, right? So that go on, that go on. Now we got about three more days left on our annual lockdown. Oh, here's a here's a um, tip for you convicts out there that might find yourselves in lockdown. When you when you locked up and they start seeing them, you start seeing them um, star phone trays, you know them to go boxes. That's when you know the lockdown coming. That's a tip for y'all. So we on the. Like I said, about three days left. 
and me and my girl had a little argument. So I'm kind of heated. So I'm like, man, y'all know when y'all be arguing with your girl and, you know, she, she keep hanging up on you. So I'm frustrated. So I'm like, man, forget it. So remember, I got the top bunk. So I lean over. I'm like, hey, man, let me ask for something. He like, what is it? I said, um, you got any people out in the people out there in the free world that you know that you want to talk to? He like, nah, everybody that I know, they done passed on. And to be honest, you know, I don't, I ain't had no visitor in about 10 years, man. I said, oh, okay, okay. See, I was trying to get the feel, man. I'm trying to get the feel to see, you know, let him use the phone as a gesture, you know, so he don't tell on me. But I guess he ain't had no need to use the phone. So I said, hey, well, check this out, man. I got one of them things in here, and uh, if you ever need to use it, you know, just let me. Now, I know, I know. I know y'all finna kill me in the comment section. I know. I know. Y'all, Dante, you had it coming. But I had to, man. I was in a fit of rage. See, the the matters of the heart took a hold of me, and I just wanted to, I just wanted to get on the phone. And I guess that, that clouded my judgment. So that's on me, y'all. Hit that like button too while y'all at it. So he he like, you got a phone? I said, yeah, man, I got a phone. You need to use it. You know, I got you. This is where the military mind game started. Y'all probably wonder why I keep looking back because you always, listen, I'm from the hood. I'm in lockdown so much i gotta keep my head on the swivel man you don't never know what's happening you don't know what's peeking around the corner oh, you just don't know man you just gotta be always aware anyway because people be talking about all oh, not to always be looking paranoid you dang right anyway so this is where the military mind games start playing so we get off a of lockdown. I instantly go hit the shower. Instantly. I'm in there getting my zesty on. And I ain't talking about zesty as, you know, being zesty. I'm talking about the soap zest. It's my favorite soap. It's that zesty soap. So I'm in there getting my zesty on. So then I get out the shower, head back to the room. He ain't in there. I'm like, no big deal. Because usually when you um, take a shower, and then you step, your cellmate usually just step out anyway to give you that privacy. So I ain't thinking nothing of it. Next thing you know, about four guards rush the cell. I'm, here, I'm right here in my towel. Halfway got my boxers on underneath and they rushed the cell. And I'm like, yo, what's up, man? Hey, they ain't cared I was naked. Had me spread the eagle style standing up against the desk. Handcuffed me. Lead me out on the tier butt naked. They eventually gave me my time to cover me up, though. But, hey, this prison, what can you do? So... Then they're tearing the cell up. And I'm like, yo, man, what is going on, man? They ain't telling me nothing. Dude's hollering because they done locked everybody down at this point. And dude's hollering like, yo, D, what's going on, man? What's going on down there, man? You do something to yourself? I'm like, man, I don't know what's going on, man. Hey, where your cell made at? I don't know. I don't know where he at. Like they tear, hey, y'all know how you know y'all know how they do it. Y'all know how they do it. They throwing your stuff out, going through everything, sticking their hand through your peanut butter, all that, man. Going through my mail. I'm talking about throwing my mattress out, throwing everything everywhere, dogging me out. So if they finally come get me out of 15 minutes, after about 15 minutes, they get me, uncuff me, tell me. Yo, get your stuff up. 
And I'm like, yo, y'all ain't gonna even gonna tell me what, what's going on? They're like, nah, we ain't, we ain't gotta tell you nothing. I'm like, all right, well, I wanna write a grievance. I wanna write a grievance, right? So I'm up there talking mad, mad crazy to these guards as I'm putting my stuff up. Now they threatening me. Oh, you gonna go back to the hole. Keep running your mouth, you going back to the hole. Y'all, I didn't want to go back to the hole. Plus I had, I just spent 15, or oh, my girl just spent 1500 on the cell phone. I'm not trying to go back to the cell. I hear some dogs barking. Let me walk back this way. So I said, man, I ain't going back to no, no, nah, man, I'm good. So then this dude come up to me about 20 minutes later we leaving from wreck. Dude come up to me. Now this dude, this particular dude that came up to me, I know he was a snitch, a jailhouse snitch. So when he approached me, I'm like, can I help you? He like, hey, check this out, man. Give me a couple of soups and I'm gonna let you know what went down in your cell. I know why they went in your cell. I said, all right, man, come on. So I broke him off three soups. He like, you know the white dude? I said, yeah. He said, yeah. He uh, dropped a dime on you and told the police that you got a cell phone. I said, for real? He said, yeah. And he about to check in. I said, all right. All right. Bet. Bet. So then, hey, y'all stay tuned. I got to go. Y'all hit that like button. I'm out. All I hear is, man, I'm tired of this, man. Come outside, man. Come outside, man. Man, I'm tired of this dude, man. He always trying to book, man. Book, man. Book. For this to make sense to y'all, I got to give y'all the backstory of Tar T. Now, when I moved to Covington, Georgia, maybe about 20 minutes from the city of Atlanta, I met this dude named Tar T. Now, when I met Tar T, me and my cousins was mobbing through the neighborhood. And um, what mobbing in the neighborhood means you just, you and your crew just walking around the neighborhood, talking to people. Um, they was introducing me to everybody. Even though I was already out there introducing myself and making my name known around the neighborhood before my cousins caught up with me. I made a video about this already. I'm not sure what video it was, but because y'all know I dropped like 40, 50 videos a month. So it's it's back there. Um, I'm not going to share that story right now because it's too, it's too, it already got nothing to do with this story, but it's really a good story. But anyway, um, so we end up going to Tar T house and, you know, I see this tall, tall dude, dude was like seven, one, looked like he's supposed to be in the NBA. So he was tall, super tall with dreads, super black with a gold grill in his mouth. So we got over here. He was like, uh, man, what's up, Dante? And uh, <laughs> it kind of threw me off. Like, man, how this dude know my name? But my cousins was already talking um, to him about me before I got down there. Y'all got to excuse me, man. It's hot where I'm at. You know, I'm trying to lose this weight right now. I'm at 235. I'm trying to get down to about 210. So, you know, I'm, I got this, um, this body suit on. I got my hoodie on and I'm down I'm sweating y'all like I'm up I'm trying to get down to like 210. So um yeah, because y'all know I got a gym and trying to get all the way back in shape. You know, I stay ready so I ain't gotta get ready. So um I'm like, what's up, man? Um we dap it up, you know, and um I ain't gonna lie, y'all, being tall T. We really hit it off, like, the first day. Um, I don't know. You know some people, when you, when you meet them, y'all just click? Like, 
don't know, man. Me and him just, we like really clicked. So in the midst of us clicking, um, Al and the rest of my cousins, and shout out to all my cousins down there in Atlanta, man. Um, Dante, love y'all if y'all watching this video. And um, I'm going to make my way down there this summer. All right? So shout out to DK, Rambo, Shay, um, Gene, Tyrone, all of y'all. Uh, Pebbles, Kiara, I know y'all going to get mad at me. Jamal, Jermaine, uh, Pig, Dominique. Yeah, so shout out to all of y'all. Down there in the A-Town. So, um, so man, him just talking, you know, he just telling me about Atlanta. And he was telling me that he was in a gang. And um, he said it was in Atlanta, based out of Atlanta. And he said it was a crib. So, I'm like, okay, okay, bet. So, he telling me, like, about all the girls in the neighborhood. All the girls in the neighborhood. And he telling me how, like, it, it was this dude named Bill. I think, yeah, his name was Bill, I believe. I could be wrong, but um, I think dude name was Bill. Um, do y'all remember the story I was telling? Well, I'm, I, I might as well tell y'all the story because y'all might be lost. I'm going to give y'all a quick rundown of who Bill is. Um, in the beginning, when I fresh off the Greyhound, I told y'all, when me and Al got to the neighborhood, Al was talking to um, my cousins, them, and I just went off in the neighborhood, you know, just walking around, establishing who I am, right? And I told y'all how um, this chick that I met, I'm not going to say her name, this chick that I met, she was outside with her mama doing, like, gardening or um put planting flowers or something. Long story short, her mama ended up going to Home Depot and me and her ended up messing around behind the house. And about two, three minutes later, me leaving her house, um, her boyfriend comes speeding up the street because he see two other dudes coming up the street. And I guess he heard that they, him and his dude and his girl was messing around. So he hopped out and they got to fighting, right? Um, that's Bill. So he telling me, hold on, hold on. He, he telling me how Bill and him got into it over this chick. Um, and he was like, yeah, man. Um, he said the girl name, but you know, I don't kiss and tell at all. So he said the girl name. And he was like, yeah, man. I ain't even hit that girl. <clears throat> I ain't even hit that girl. But, you know, me and this dude named Bill, we all we beefed out over this chick. And um, I'm like, okay, all right. So he come telling me this story that now where I live that um, when you get in our cul-de-sac, there's, there's, okay, okay, imagine a circle. And then, well, y'all know how cold the sex is, but it's something we call it the drive. So when you go down um, my street, it goes like down, and then it's like a circle. So you got houses lined up like this, and then houses lined up like that. Then you can go out, right? One way in, one way out. And I stay all the way down, um, down the road to the left. So called T stay kind of diagonally from my house this way to the right but next door to his house is a path like a wooded path that goes into the goes on the next street now he told me um as we talking about bill and his beef with bill he telling me like you know one day he just left this chick house and when he was coming through the path to come to his house, he heard like this rustling noise in the bushes. Now, if y'all know about Georgia um, and Covington, y'all know it's like pine trees, it's wooded area, all that, right? It ain't like the city, you just got woods everywhere. So 
he said that he heard some rustling, like some noises in the bushes, like a deer or something. He said the next thing he know, everything went black. Everything went black. And he, when he woke up, he ended up in his bed. I said, hold up. And he just telling me this story casually. I said, hold up, hold up, hold up. You telling me you was walking through the trail and everything just went black? You heard some noises in the bushes and everything went black? He was like, yeah, man. I was like, man, what happened, man? He said, man, somebody knocked me out. I think Bill knocked me out. But I can't prove it. I said, wait, wait. <laughs> Hold on, G. Hold on, man. So, I mean, check this out, y'all. Imagine that. As a matter of fact, y'all keep it funky with me. In the comment section, let me know have any of y'all ever been knocked out. Okay? And I'm going to be real with y'all. Dante ain't never been knocked out. Who is that? Keep that noise down. I'm making a video. My bad, y'all. So, I'm going to be real. I've never been knocked out, but I've been knocked in a daze. Okay? I've been punched. So, but, but you know what? In my defense, dude had a cast on. He had a cast. So, in my defense, um, I was at a handicap. Literally, dude had a cast on. We got the rumbling in the locker room, and he caught me with a cold one. Boom! Knocked me. Y'all remember that scene when um when Eddie Murphy was fighting Goldmouth on Life? It was just like that, man. But I wasn't knocked out. I was knocked into a daze. But um, anyway, he told me he, he was like, "Yeah, um, yeah, I think Bill knocked me out." Now, if y'all if for anybody anybody that may that might be watching this video that know who Todd T is, y'all y'all know how tall this duel is. So anybody that's fighting him or putting hands on him has to jump up in the air. And you have to be strong because Tar T wasn't no uh pushover. And, but I guess if I don't know who did it, but whoever did it had to be strong. And the way uh Bill was built. He he looked like he had some power behind his fist, but I just couldn't see it, man, because how Bill was like my height, or maybe just a tad bit taller, but he was way bigger than me. But at the same time, I, the only way Bill could do that, if he had to jump up like Superman and, you know, hit him just right. But, you know, Tarty said he woke up in his bed. And, um, you know, with that, Oh, it was crazy. But, um, so me and Tar T kicking and he telling me the story and he telling me, like, um, just be careful out here in the neighborhood. These dudes are snakes. They be tripping over their girls and all this and that. But you already, you already know me, man. I don't kiss and tell anyway. You know, that's, that's, I always been like that since middle school. It's like one of them things is why would I tell the homies, you know, well, I, well, let me take that back. I always told Al everything, but um, but in like in like in high school, I would if I messed around with anybody, I would not tell nobody because that's just messing up my chances of getting again, getting it again, right? So that's why I never did that kissing and telling stuff, man. That that's whack. Who, who, who I need brownie points from? So, um. Dealing with moving from that situation, um, that's how me and Tar T met. Me and Tar T would go on in that neighborhood and in the city of Atlanta doing things that we had no business doing. Um, but when you young, 19, 20, 21 years old, you know, if you ain't no gay guy, you know, it's, it's so many women in Atlanta. There's so many of them. But the reason why I want to touch on Tar T story just a little bit for y'all is to let y'all know um, me and Tar T background. Um, I remember this time where me, my sister, Tar T, Homicide, Derek, Al, um, Kia, P, 
Pig, Dominique. I think Derek was with us. I'm not sure. It was some other people with us, and we went to spend a night over these chicks' house. And um, oh, Rosalie, shout out to my cousin Rosalie too. What's up, Rosalie? That Rosalie was my dog. So, um, Tarty and Homicide. I'm gonna give y'all some stories about Homicide too in another video. But Tarty and Homicide, they um, they they knew of each other in in our neighborhood, but they didn't really care for each other. I'm the one that actually brought them to together because Tar T was a crip and Homicide was a gangster disciple. And um, yes, in Atlanta, in them outskirts, the gang banging is heavy. It's heavy, man. Um, Dante ain't never joined the gang. I just always been me. I just could not, I mean, I always been affiliated, I mean, with different gangs because, you know, I'm just cool with people. But um, I bought Tar T and Homicide together. They never was beefing on the gang type of stuff. But they, I don't think Homicide really cared for Tar T at all. Now, Homicide, just to touch on him right quick, he, he was somebody that had extreme talent um, as far as wrestling go. In middle school and high school, he was like, um, I don't know the word, for like being a top tier wrestler or whatever in the nation, he could have had a contract with with um, the WWF back um, in them times, but he he wouldn't give up that street life at all. You know, a waste of talent. But um, him and Ro so we all at the house at this chick house and um, Tarty and Homicide got into it because. Tarty showed interest in my cousin, Rosalie. And for some reason, um, I don't know if Homicide liked it, Rosalie, too, but he was hating on him. Long story short, <laughs> long story short, I, sh I should go in greater detail with this story, but I'm not. But long story short, man, all I hear is, Man, I'm tired of this, man. Come outside, man. Come outside, man. Man, I'm tired of this dude, man. He always trying to book, man. Book, man. Book. <laughs> so, uh, at this time, it was like in a triplex house. You know, you got the basement, the first floor, the second floor, and the third floor. And I'm in a basement, hugged up with, you know, just some type of random breezy. And I hear Tarty, like, man, book. Book, I'm tired of this, man. I'm tired of this, man. Come outside and book, man. Come outside and book. And so, you know, I get up from laid up with the breezy, and I head upstairs, and I see Tarty with his shirt off, and I'm inside like, man, you better watch out, man. Watch out, man, if I do that to you, if I do that to you. Um, and I'm like, man, what's going on, man? Dante, I'm tired of this, mom. You know what, y'all? I just thought about something, too. Tar T, I got so many stories about this dude. Uh, snare mind. We can be, we'll be on here all day, man. Be telling you all the stories about Tar T. But um, this is leading up to the video I'm about to show y'all at the end. Um, just in case if y'all missed this prior, prior in my videos that I made um, about Tar T. It didn't get really that much traction, but I figured now it'll get the traction. So, just stay tuned to the end, y'all, so I can upload the video about Tarty. So, um, basically, I had to get in between Tarty and Homicide. I dang they had to wrestle Tarty out the house um, to calm him down. But um, they didn't end up fighting out of respect to me. And, um, yeah, that's just Tarty stayed with me when we moved to... Um, um, what was that called? Forest Villa. Shout out to Forest Villa. Shout out to Thong Thong, Big Chevy. Y'all, hey, I know y'all like Thong Thong. Yeah, there's a dude named Thong Thong. His real name is Thonkis. Okay? There's no cap. That's all true. Thong Thong. But, um, and my people that's in Georgia, y'all know what I'm talking about. It's, um, and, um, um, Forest Villa, 
Y'all know where Forest Villa at. I think that's in, is that in Conyers or Covington? I'm not sure. It's it, it's in one of them. But um, Forest Villa is like a lot of townhouses in like a, a, like a cul-de-sac full of townhouses. Um, that's one thing about Georgia, man. It says, I mean, now, you know, it's real violent and crazy. But back then, man, it was just love, man. That that real Southern hospitality, man. Man, I, it was just something like smelling them pines, man. Waking up in them, man. That's, I I don't know, man. But it is what it is. Um, I remember he stayed out there with us um, in Forest Villa, man. I got crazy stories about that, too. But... Like I said, all this is to set up for y'all to know who Tar T is. He was a womanizer. Um, he he was gang banging, and um, he was a cool dude. Now we about to get to the story where me and Tar T ran into each other in lockup. Let's go. He was like, "Man, Dante, man, listen, bro." I want to do that to you, man. I was trying to get them dudes up off you, man. I, man, come on, man. We boys, man. We knew each other for years, man. You don't want to leave you out there like that, man. Come on, shawty, man. Don't be acting like that, bro. You know I had you. I said, look, man. Just, just forget it, man. I, I know next time. He like, you know next time what, man? I did have your back, man. Come on, bro. Don't, man, don't do that, bro. Anyway, bro, I was thinking maybe you should get down with the Crips, man, because after what just happened, you know them blood's gonna be on your head, man, for that. I was like, listen, man, I'm gonna worry about myself, all right? Plus, I don't follow orders really well. I can't get down with no organization. He like, man, I'm just saying, man, you got the squabbles, man. I'm telling you, man, you should get down with the crypt, man. I'm telling you, man, you will be a good fit in our organization. I was like, nah, man, I'll figure it out, man. I ain't trying to get caught up in none of these gang politics, man. I'm good. I was like, all right, Dante, I'm just saying, man, you, you should just come on over. Come on to the blue side, man. I was like, I know one thing, though. When we get out of here and I hit that yard, you and your partners better have my back or something. Because, hey, what I did for you, hey, yo, yo, hey. Tarty was like, man, you know I got you, man. Come on, Dante, that ain't even no question. I'm over there thinking to myself, like, yeah, all right. I know what I said. I was in there mixing it up with these bloods for you. You over there, dang, they're running up the stairs. I know I might be irritating some of y'all, but I need for y'all to hit that like button, man. Come on, y'all, hit that like button. Now, two long months done passed, and Tar T ended up getting out of the hole. For some weird reason, I ended up getting out two weeks later after he got out. Now, when I got out through the grapevine, I ended up hearing that Tar T was causing issues with the Crip gang that he was belong to on the compound. According to some of the cats on the compound, they were saying since Tar T was from Atlanta that they wasn't respecting this Cripping. So a week later, I ended up getting transferred to his pod. And this is when all the BS started happening. Not only this pod that I was sent to was dominated by the Bloods, but every Saturday, it was a thing called Fight Night. Whoever you got beef with, y'all go to the cell and y'all get it on. Since Tar T been out, he done got into one squabble with one of his partners on a fight night. He done got into two fights with two blood members. I didn't know he was telling dudes in the pod like, yeah, when my homeboy Dante get out, man, he gonna be in here wrecking. He gonna be in here wrecking. I'm telling y'all, man, as soon as my homeboy Dante get out, I'm telling y'all, he finna come through wrecking. So when I hit the pot, I was greeted with a lot of shifty eyes because Tar T was running his mouth about me. Welcome to the Terror Dome. It's Terror Dome time, y'all. It's 9 p.m. Saturday. Me and Tar T versus Two Bloods about to get it on. Like a WCW, WWF, SummerSlam, Hell in a Cell match. Now when I was in the hole, y'all, I was in there getting my swole on get my push-ups and my sit-ups on so I was real right and tight. Get my flex on. And yes, them punches was going fast and hard. So now the two-on-two -two squabble has commenced. So when a guy ran up at me, I hit him with a Kimbo slice uppercut. Put him to
to bed. Here's a pillow, homie. Good night. Now that I'm thinking about it, Tarty didn't have no squabble, y'all. He over there tied up with the other dude up on the desk. He holding a dude like this. So I instantly run over there and start punching on dude head. As I'm firing up that dude head, I end up feeling punches getting hit on my dome piece. I'm like, hold on, I'm getting jumped. The whole eight bloods that was in that pot rushed the cell and ended up putting hands and feet on me. And then Tarty homeboys, we with the other six crits, they came in there. It was a full blown red on blue and Dante squabble. Have y'all ever been into a fight where you got so many dudes fighting in one cramped place and they say, no, you hitting your homeboys and the enemy hitting they cell. So it's just a full blown mayhem match up in here. Till one of these blood dudes pull out a sword of justice. When that happened, everybody scattered out the cell. Chris was like, all right, all right, all right, bet, all right, bet. Y'all wanna do knife play? Y'all wanna do knife play? All right, all right. In the midst of all this going on, the goon squad was already in the pot. It was lined up with they riot shields and they billy clubs. Make a long story short, we all got whipped out by the police. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like button and bless the cash app. Also, if somebody in prison that you know or you knew in the streets and you never seen them mix it up with anybody and just because you know them on the streets, don't think that they gonna have your back all the time. You better make sure you do some research on that person because, hey, Tar T, he couldn't squabble and he left me hanging that first time. Anyway, y'all hit that like button Bless the cash app. This is the Dante Show Network Prison Stories. I'm out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. If you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you want to continue to show your support of the Dante Show Network, make sure you bless that cash app and or the PayPal. If you want your business or social media channel promoted, I charge $20 a video. Email me right here. Until next time, stay safe. The worst thing that can happen to a man is losing his virginity as a man, taken from another man. And I think a lot of people get it twisted where they say, oh, it's a whole bunch of gay guys that's in prison that's willing and willing to give it up so ain't nobody in there taking no butt before we start this video i want people to understand something i don't make these videos for adults that already got it together i don't make these videos for people that are doing good in life. I make these videos for the sole purpose of young adults or teenagers or even adults that might be going down the road of crime and never been locked up before. This is why I make these videos. Lately, I've been seeing in the comment section, oh, Dante, why every time I turn around, you talking about booty bandits you want to know why i keep talking about booty bandits it's because the worst thing that can happen to a man while in prison besides losing his mama his daddy or a child or a best friend or his wife the worst thing that can happen to a man is losing his virginity as a man taken from another man and I think a lot of people get it twisted where they say, oh, it's a whole bunch of gay guys that's in prison that's willing and willing to give it up. So ain't nobody in there taking no butt. That is 100% false. On one way, yes, there are a whole lot of homosexuals that are locked up and will give it away for free or for some commissary. But there is still guys up in there that like the thrill of the hunt. There's still guys in there 
that is demented and twisted in the brain that they don't want you to give it to them. They want you to fight. They want to take it from you. They want to put you in a predicament where it's like a cat got a mouse trapped and they want to pounce on you. It's cats in there that go in at the age of 14, 15, 16 in a county jail. And when they get sentenced to juvenile life, they stay at a juvenile detention center, hopefully, hopefully, I say hopefully, because a lot of these juveniles get sent up the road, get sent upstate and go up there with the big boys at. I gotta make sure this car ain't trying to hit my car. Hold on. Okay, they good, my bad y'all. People don't know how to drive here in Kentucky, man. Oh, that's another thing, y'all. So, yes, I am in Kentucky. I'm going to be here till the summertime. All right, people be asking me, yo, Dante, where you from? Let me ask y'all where y'all from. In the comment section, y'all tell your big partner, Dante, what city and state y'all are from. So, before we get into the story, because I know this is what y'all waiting on, I'm going to give it to y'all, but I have to give y'all this disclaimer. Okay, these videos, they are for me to entertain y'all because YouTube is WWF, World Wrestling Federation. These videos is also here to educate. It's a lot of cats, a lot of cats, girls and boys, that's out here picking up them guns and laying people down with not no second thought, no care. They just react. And then when they get in that county jail and then the weight of the world actually fall on their shoulders and they realize what they have done. And when they hear that life without the possibility of parole. All right, y'all keep on playing military mind games and keep on playing games. The last thing I'm going to address and then we're going to get to the story. For you demons out there that be talking about, oh, Dante, go get a job. Stop begging. You always begging for likes. You always begging for somebody to lean on the cash app and the PayPal. Let me tell you something. There's people out here in this world that recognize that Dante is doing a job. Do you think I just sit up all day in front of the camera telling these prison stories and these hood stories and these paranormal stories just for the heck of it? This is a job. Doing social media is a job. The Bible says that if a man don't work, a man do not eat. I'm working, baby. In my prior history, I had contracts in Michigan with the biggest hospitals in Michigan. I'm not going to say their name, but I had a business doing that. Okay. Prior to that, I was a truck driver. So I know how to get, I know how to get the money legally. My philosophy is work less, don't work hard at all, and get paid more. Me being on social media, I done got paid. I'm getting paid so much better than truck driver because I done did it. I get to stay home with my family. I can be more involved in my kids' life. So for the people out there that be talking about, oh, go get a job and this and that, this is a job. And for everybody that be blessing the PayPal and the Cash App, Dante appreciate it all the way. Okay, today's Saturday, y'all. Y'all got time to rock with me, so let's rock again. <clears throat> Everybody that be blessing the Cash App and the PayPal, whoever y'all are, thank you, thank you for y'all support. I don't know if it's enough people that do that on YouTube, but thank you. Okay, because y'all don't have to do it. And the reason why I want to tell y'all, thank y'all, because I don't care if y'all put a dollar in the cash app versus $10,000 in the cash app. It's all appreciated because you took the time out to say, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and lean on the cash app or the PayPal and support that brother. So with that, thank y'all. And I want to thank all my members that took the extra step 
and subscribed to the YouTube channel and actually became a member. Now listen, y'all, I know we all ain't got it. I know we ain't. I know what type of economy we in. So I'm not pressing y'all. Well, well, it's not a hard press, maybe a soft press. I gotta get rid of them prison ways. But I'm not pressing y'all to bless that cash app or the PayPal. Some of y'all got it, some of y'all don't. It's cool, it's all good, all right? I just wanna let y'all know that Dante appreciate y'all. Next thing, everybody been asking me, Dante, where the merchandise, where the merchandise at? If you look in the description of all my videos, you will see click link for merch in the description. Okay, just click on that, it'll take you to the store. I got things for men, women, gay people, babies, kids, I got handbags, I got aprons, I got hats, everything y'all can think of. So go ahead and go click on that link to go to the Dante Show Network store. And I'm gonna have a pent up in the comment section for y'all too, to get there easy, okay? So last thing, a lot of people been emailing me for promotion, okay? It is not $10 no more. That was a special. That was a special I was doing to give back. It's back at the regular price. It's $20 a video. What you get with that, I put your business or your social media link in the description of my video that you pay for. I put your link and your social media or your business link in my community tab. I get a lot of traffic over there, and y'all know I get a lot of traffic on these videos. And also, I will shout out your business or your social media channel, okay? That's what you get with that. It's $20 a video. Now, let's get to the story. So you got this cat, and I told y'all about the story about the, the, young, the young guy that end up deleting his grandmama because she told him to give up them keys. And some people was like, yo, Dante, is this a real story? Is this a real story? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, y'all. Um, the reason why I left out a lot of details because I know some of the family members of this family. But I done spoke to them and they said, you know what, it's out there. Go ahead and put it out there. I took out a lot of details and I left out a lot of locations. But this right here was in Detroit, Michigan, okay? AJ is not the dude name at all, okay? For obvious reasons, I'm not putting his real name out there. But this is the piggyback off that story of what happened in prison. Now, when he got up in there, you got cats in their 30s and their 40s. And you cannot tell them nothing. And when I say you can't tell them about nothing, you cannot tell them that when this young 17, 18 year old come up in there and his skin is smooth and his face is a baby face. Some of them men, when he came in there, all they picture was, hmm, I know exactly what I'm gonna do to that young buck. Oh, what he in here for? He killed his grandma? Oh, my grandma been dead for 20 years. That's my excuse to get what I want to get out of, out of him. You see, these cats right here, they real demented. They real demonic. So, as they looking at his baby face and his smooth skin, they say, huh, maybe what we gonna do is get a mop head, get some Jolly Ranchers, get some water, right? Let the Jolly Ranchers marinate inside of the water to get that coloring. And then we gonna put that mop head in there and let it soak so we can get color, it'll be colorful. Y'all see where I'm going with this. They gonna, they gonna put that on top of his head to make him look real girly. So dude, first day, 
after, after he get out of intake and he get classified and all this and that, you get a cell by yourself when you first get locked up. I don't know how it is in other prisons, but where this cat was at, after intake and you get classified, you go to a single cell. And then after maybe a month or two, um, and remember y'all, this is the reception center, the reception center. So with him having life without the possibility of parole, this is not his final stop. This is like a level one. Um, he finna go to a level four off the jump. Anybody got natural life, they automatically go to a level four. And you can, you know, you get, if you doing good and not getting no tickets or getting written up and getting not falling into trouble, you can work your way down. Always know that too. If y'all find yourselves in a maximum um, security prison, you can always work your way down levels, okay? I'm gonna do another video about that. But, so, he in the cell by himself. And you know, it's this cat down the hallway that keep hollering at him. Talking about, yeah, yeah, man. Hey, when we hit this yard, man, you gonna have to toot that thing up. You gonna have to toot that thing up, toot it up. This dude that was talking to him was obviously from Atlanta. If y'all don't hear it in the accent. Man, you gonna have to toot that thing up, toot that thing up on the yard right? These are military mind games. Now, I don't know if dude was seri serious about what he was saying, but who knows? Anyway, about, I'm going to say a week later, after toot that thing up, he gets sent to his pod where he going to be at. And, and this pod is a two, it's a two man cell. You got the top rack, you got the bottom rack. So he go get in the cell. Now, when you get a new, when you get a new, um, Sally, you have to turn around and get handcuffed and go to the back of your cell until the other guy, the new guy that's coming in your cell till he get uncuffed and he get in there. Then you come back and then you get uncuffed and then y'all both in there. They put him in a cell with this dude named Bo. This big, black, big black dude, bald head cat. Bo was, his philosophy was this. I'm not a homosexual if, you're not a homosexual, you're not a gay guy if you is doing the deed. He basically, Bo whole thing is if you ain't, if I'm not take, I'm not taking it, so I'm not gay. I'm the one giving it, so I'm not gay. You know, twisted, twisted thinking. These cats try to psych and trick themselves to thinking that they not doing something wrong when they obviously doing something wrong. They try to justify these demonic act. What's up? These demonic activities. So they put them in there with both. Bo been down for about 15 years and Bo ain't never going home. So they put him in there with Bo. Bo turn around looking while he handcuffed, like looking to see like, let me make sure this ain't no enemy coming in here with me or somebody I got an issue with. So he looking over his shoulder, he see him, he like, oh, okay, okay, bet. All right. Bo, Come back here. He walking back and he looking at him. He looking at AJ like, mm, mm, oh yeah. Right? AJ like, man, what the heck? So the CEOs leave and he like, all right, youngster, you got the top bunk. He like, okay, okay. And then, well, uh, you need anything? No, I, I don't need I don't need nothing. See, AJ was told in the county jail exactly about what's about to happen and do not take nothing from nobody. So he like, all right, listen, listen, this I talk. <clears throat> hey, you need something? No, nah, man, I, I don't need nothing. Are you sure you don't need nothing? Because you know I got you. My name is Bo. 
and I'm here to look out for you. We sellies, so I'm gonna give you the whole rundown. Okay, at six o'clock, this first movement, we gotta get up, we gotta be out the sale, and we gotta do the wristband, okay? And that's what's called roll call, the first movement, okay? So after that, you can go to the chow hall, and you get breakfast, and you know, do whatever you got to do, but then we gotta come back here and lock down. And then we get out of here at eight o'clock. Um, you gonna sign up for some programs or anything? You 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 got your GED or your high school diploma? No, no, I I I don't got none of them. Oh, okay, okay. Hey, but hold on, hold, hold on, hold on, little rascal. Let, let me ask you something. What you doing in here? Like like what what what, what happened? Oh man, I don't really want to talk about it. No, man, come on, hey man, come on, man. My name Bo, man. I, I done heard it all. I done did. Listen, as long as you ain't did nothing to no kids, we straight, bro. We straight. So what, what happened? What, what you in for, man? <sighs> all right, man. So I, me and my, me and my granny, we we end up. Your grandma? Yeah, yeah, my my granny. Yeah, me and my granny end up, you know, getting into an argument and. I kind of like bumped her and she like fell and hit her head and she passed away. Dang, young blood, for real? Oh man, that's sad, man. I lost, my, I lost my grandma about 15, 20 years back, man. That man, I know how that can hurt, man. So I know, man. Matter of fact, that it's trying to tear me up right now, man. Come here, bro. Give me a hug, bro. Give me a hug. He basically pulled AJ to him. Give me a hug, bro. Oh, yeah, bro. But he holding him tight. So AJ, like, Okay, uh, all right, bro. So he let him go. What I'm about to say next, y'all, is a thing of horror. Peep the, peep the thumbnail. This is why I said never eat the sneakers. About three days to go by, and Bo was just steady pressing, steady pressing, steady pressing AJ. About what? But basically laying in the bed with him. See, Bo acted like he had like a childlike mentality. For the next three days of that night. Oh, oh, mama, mama, grandma. This was, Bo was, was making noises like that at night. He would say, Dante, how you know? I'm about four sails down this way. So I could hear Bo in the middle of the night. But this is his military mind games to keep this guy up trying to deprive him of sleep so he'll be tired. And this all this all play into what, what we finna get to. So now this will go on for three days with Bo keeping this dude up. So now he he tired, he 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 sleep deprived. Um Bo keep on doing military mind games like saying sexual stuff and dude AJ don't really know what to say back to him. He he asking AJ about um, girls that he was messing around with in the outside. And I'm going to tell y'all something. He actually, on his third night of, oh, oh, keeping them up and all that, he actually did something that night that anybody that's been locked up, y'all know that if you, I, I, I'm trying to say this in the right way so I don't get in trouble on YouTube. If you decide that you want to um, play the video game with yourself and you make a release with yourself, y'all get what I'm saying? It's certain ways that you got to do this, man. Number one, but let me say it's certain ways you don't post to do this. Number one, you do not do that while your celly is in the cell. That's number one. You do not do that. You could lose your life for doing something like that. It, that is one of the most disrespectful things. Imagine dude at the bottom bunk playing this video game and you at the top rack. You don't know what this dude thinking about. He probably picturing that is you that he, we ain't even gonna go there anyway. So he done did that. And AJ at the top bunk that's terrified like Man, this cannot be my life. This cannot be my life. <sighs> no, this is your life. The fourth day, AJ is like, he. you can see it all in his eyes, man. He just, 
tired. He just tired. Dude leave out the cell. AJ leave out the cell. AJ come back in the cell. There's some candy bars that's on his bed. We all done heard the myth. We all done heard, heard about do not eat the candy bars. Do not take, don't eat nothing that somebody gives you. AJ grabbed the sneaker, peeled it back, and ate it. And then he peeled another one back, and he ate it. It was the, the mini sneakers, not the big ones, the mini ones, the fun size ones. He hit about five of them up. About 30 minutes later, Bo come rolling up in the cell. Oh, you, you ate that, young blood? You, you ate that? Yeah, 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 it was good. Oh, okay. Uh, well, check this out. Um, you need anything else? Nah, I, I don't need nothing. Hey, um, about last night, you know, I, I had to take care of me. I, you know, I'm, I'm still a man and, you know, I, I, I got needs, man. And, you know, we, we are obviously, we around here by a whole bunch of dudes. So, you know, I'm, I'm just, I just had to, be, I had to do me. AJ like, yeah, man, you cool, you fine. AJ, no, that's not cool. He ain't fine. He ain't he he wanna pull that with somebody like me. Cause he I I would have leaned over with that sword of just and told him, yo, matter of fact, I wouldn't have told him nothing because he knew better not to play with me like that. That sword of justice would have just been resting in some part of his body. Now he like, oh, okay, okay, yeah, I understand, I understand. You you have to do what you have to do. Now, he said, yo, uh, you, you ate all them sneakers, right? He said, yeah, yeah. He said, well, you only supposed to ate one. And he like, huh? He was like, yeah, uh, I made a mistake and put five of them up there, man. You only supposed to ate one. Um, you gonna have to pay me back and I'm gonna need mine today. AJ like, what, what you mean? Well, what, what, what I'm saying is, you ate something of mine and I did not give you permission to eat it. Now, I don't know how you gonna pay for it, but how I do things in, in this in here in this prison, <clears throat> I need mine today. Today, before it's locked down. Or you're gonna have to give me something. AJ Light, give you what? You gonna have to give me some. For me not sleeping with her and she finding that her money was gone, she said that I broke into her house and robbed her. So me and Al, we back in Columbus, Ohio. You would think that we would have learned our lesson from the last time we was there when my car got stolen. And yeah, we got it back. Um... Well, y'all know, if y'all don't know, Ohio State is in Columbus, Ohio, the college. It's a college town. And um, I think it's off of Main Street. It goes right through downtown. So me and Al out there trying to talk to women. Um, more, more or less, we out there trying to get on some rich white girls. Um, yeah, that's what we was out there doing, trying to get up on some rich white girls that go to, go to Ohio State. So we out there doing what we do, and, um, I see this Indian and black chick, man, um, I roll up on her, and I'm talking to her, I'm talking to her, I end up getting her number. Till this day, this is the reason why Dante ended up in prison. Keep that in mind. So I end up talking, I end up getting her number and she told me that she lived off campus. She actually stayed off of Morris Road. Uh, for anybody that live in Columbus, Ohio, y'all know exactly where Morris Road at. Matter of fact, it's Morris Road and Kings Highland Drive, okay, back there. So um, she tell me she lived off campus. She um, live by herself, her family from Chicago, 
and I can come over, you know, later on. So I'm like, all right, bet. So I end up meeting back up with Al. He ain't had no luck. So I said, all right, you're just going to roll with me. So I'm going to say maybe 9 o'clock that night, uh, we make our way over there. Now, we go over there. Oh, I have to tell y'all this. I know, look, I'm married now. Um, I'm a faithful man. I don't do none of that. But back then, I was a dog and I wasn't married. I was just out here living trifling. So, when we got to the girl house, I knocked on the door. And I have to stress, I have to stress that this woman was drop dead gorgeous. I mean, she had like the smoothest brown skin like myself. You know what I'm saying? Um, she was just radiating, you know, long black silky hair just didn't have no makeup on. That, she was just drop dead gorgeous. So when she answered the door, she was like, okay, you got you got to take your shoes off and y'all go have a seat in the living room. I'll be right back. So Al looked at me like, God dang, because he ain't seen her at this point. I was telling her like, man, this girl is bad, right? So when he, he looking at me like, dang, she cold. Man, yeah, she was cold. So we sitting down and she go upstairs and she come back down because she had a townhouse. So she come back downstairs and she was like sitting like, okay, so she had a love seat right here, which me and Al was sitting on, on the opposite side. And she had like a couch over here to the right. And she had a big TV right there with on the stand. So she sit on the couch and she just smiled and I'm like, oh, uh, so what's up? She like, I don't know, you tell me. And I'm like, well, um, what you like to do? She was like, Nothing really. I just like to study and, you know, I like to go to Buffalo Wild Wings. I was like, okay. I said, you want to go? She was like, yeah, I like, guess. So Al like, man, I ain't trying to be no third wheel because actually when she went upstairs, you know, Al cut in to me like, you think she, she going to go? And what that meant was do, do I think that she would let both of us, you know, do things to her, you know, fornication. I'm going to say fornicate with her, you know, a two-on-one type of thing. And I was like, nah, I don't think she that type or whatever. And me personally, y'all, I'm stingy. I'm not about to share. Dante don't like to share. What's mine is mine. And if anything, I'm going first. And that that's just the bottom line, okay? I ain't never was the one to take one for the team. I am the one to put the team in position, okay? So, it ain't none of that. Dante don't like to share. What's mine is mine. So when he seen that it wasn't going that way, he was like, and especially when we decided to go to Buffalo Wild Wings, he was like, no, nah, I'm going to roll out. I'm going to roll out. So um, Al took the car, and I just rolled with her to Buffalo Wild Wings. This is where the story start taking a dangerous turn. So we get to Buffalo Wild Wings, y'all. Um, I don't know if we got any any Indian people in the comment section, but um, and I'm not putting this whole blanket on nobody. But when we get to Buffalo Wild Wings, the first thing that you think of getting is chicken, right? Everybody thinking about getting chicken, you know, the wings. We come here for the wings. We sit down at the table. I get me a lemonade. Y'all know how I do it. I don't like alcohol. I love me some lemonade, though. I get me a lemonade. She get her a water, right? So she go to the bathroom, and I order. I order me 10 bone-in mild and 10 honey barbecue bone-in, right? And I got me some celery also with blue cheese. So I order mine, and... I just ordered her some um, lemon pepper because you can't go wrong with dry seasoned lemon pepper. So I get her the dry seasoned lemon pepper and when she come back, I said, I ordered for you. And she was like, oh, what you order? I said, well, I got me some mild and some honey barbecue 
and I got you some bone-in seasoned um, lemon pepper wings. And she, the, like the whole look of her face was like, ew. She was like, are you serious? I said, what? I'm thinking the way she said it, like, it was a joke in a way. She, but she was dead serious. She was like, her, her continents failed. She was like, are you serious? Why would you get me that? I'm like, uh, I mean, you went to the bathroom and, you know, I already ordered. And she was like, you black dudes is all the same. Y'all just think about yourselves. I said, wait, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. I wasn't thinking about myself. I got you some wings. You know, I mean, we could change the order. So she's like, yeah, we're going to have to change that. I don't eat chicken anyway. And I was like, you don't eat chicken? I said, why? You, why we could have went anywhere. You the one saying the Buffalo Wild Wings. She was like, no, I said that. That sounds good. And I'm, plus, I'm a vegetarian. So I'm like, all right. Now, listen, if she wasn't as fine as she was, I would have just got up out of there. Okay, but me and them days, you know, I, anyway. So I said, all right, we're just, all right, all right, whatever, whatever. So the food come, I smash mine, and I'm smashing hers too, because she wasn't eating it anyway. And I was paying for it anyway. So she ate her salary. She was like, that is just so disgusting. How could you eat that? And I'm like, but you here. Like, it don't make sense. Why would you be here with all of us carnivores, right? With these meat eaters, like, what? Well, it didn't make sense to me either, y'all. But, you know, beauty making man do stupid things and put up with stupid things, right? So, we end up leaving there, and I had maybe about 10, about 10 pieces of chicken left. So, we get back to her house. And, um, y'all already know, if y'all watch my um, skit that I put out back then. They used to call me Buddy Love, or I used to call myself Buddy Love. And y'all, if y'all put two to two together, y'all watched the Nettie Professor. Y'all knew who Buddy Love was, so I was Buddy Love back then. So you know how Buddy Love did it. So we got back to the house, and uh, you know I'm just staring at her, and we end up going upstairs to the bedroom. So y'all already know what time it is, but I know what y'all thinking. Y'all like, man, Dante, you ain't. I, I got you. I don't worry about it. So I'm laying on the bed. She said, I'm about to get, I'm about to freshen up, right? I said, all right, bet. Cool, cool. So I'm laying on the bed. I'm like, I'm about to go down, right? She come out the bathroom. And she just, she got like a bonnet on. She gonna put her hair wrapped up. And she got her like this pink um, house coat thing. And it's wrapped, like, like um, tied up in the front. And she just get in the bed. And I'm like, now, I'm on the right side of the bed. She on the left side of the bed. So, I'm like, man, that's, that's weird. Like, I said, all right. So, y'all know me. I creep up under the covers. And, you know, I slide up beside her like we spooning. So, I put my left hand over and she like kind of bumped me a little bit and she was like um i don't know what type of girl you think i am but we not about to do what you think now i know i know i know y'all it, it was crazy to me because it's like this is our first time meeting the date was i can't even say the date was cool because it wasn't but you allowed me to be in your bed so what do you think what do you think that i'm thinking like i'm just feeling this but Anyway, so we, long story short, we didn't do nothing, no kissing, no nothing. I just held her throughout the night, right? I ended up falling asleep. Next thing you know, I get up probably like, I naturally get up around 7 o'clock anyway. So I get up around like 7, 10, 7, 15. She ain't there at all. So I get up, I'm looking around, I'm like, man, what the? Where this girl at? So I get up, I go look in her bathroom. She ain't there. I go downstairs. I call her name. She don't answer. So then I call her. And she like, I'm in class, right? I'm in class. Just, um, you can just let yourself out. Go out the back door and lock the door. So I said, all right. Now, back in the day, y'all, you know, I got to keep it real. I got to keep it raw and all the way funky with y'all. Y'all know my get down. So I went back upstairs and I'm like, man, this ain't gonna work. 
So I go upstairs and I end up going through her dresser drawers. You know, and I know y'all, you your freaky people out there, they got, oh, I know Dante went out bad. He in this smelling stuff. Nah, nah, Dante ain't never been that type, ever. So I'm going through her dresser drawers and I'm looking for some money. I'm looking for some jewelry. I told y'all that was my get down. That's how I was, I was a criminal back in them days. So I'm going through her dresser drawers and I find $300 rolled up. So grab it, put it in the pocket. I went through the other drawers and stuff. They ain't find nothing. So I left. I'm going to say about, I'm going to say I left probably around 8.30 a.m. Al came and got me from the grocery store. I walked to the grocery store. So he came and got me and he was like, so what happened, man? What y'all do? Nothing. Man, stop playing, man. What happened? We ain't do nothing, man. I, I just held her. He was like, nah, I'll tell you, come on, bro. Man, but this is me. This Al, man. This Al, man. What, man, what's up, man? What happened, man? God dang. I'm like, man, what you do? Man, I ain't, I ain't gonna put Al business out there, but I'm just gonna say this. Al got him some, but let's say uh, he had to come up, come up off that. But uh, so Al telling me what he did, and uh, he like, so man, for real, man, tell me what happened. I said nothing, man. She didn't give it to me, right? But I got this though, and I pulled it out. He said, oh man, that's crazy. So we went to East East End Mall, East End Mall, off of um. Morris Road. We went up there. We went shopping. She called it. She called. Kept calling. I'm thinking like, yeah. Oh, she must have knew I took the money. So I asked for I'm like, hello? She was like, are you coming back to the house? I said, um, I wasn't planning on to. She was like, well, I know I was kind of acting weird. I was just trying to figure you out. Could you come back to the house? In my head, I'm thinking like, oh, man, she think I'm stupid think the police gonna come. I said, nah, cause I'm under the assumption that she knew that I took the money. I like, nah, I'm good, I'm, I'm cool. She was like, why, why you acting like that? And then she was like, oh, because we didn't sleep together last night, that's why? Here, look at your phone. So I looked at the phone and she sent me a body shot. Now, I, she was in lingerie. So I'm like, oh man, all right. I said, okay, bet, I, I'll be over there. All right, y'all, I know what the title said about dropping the soap and how Dante got to get incarcerated. Now we finna get there. That's what y'all been waiting on. So I tell Al, you know, park over here and uh, I'm about to go up here. Why when I go to the door, y'all, I go up there, I knock on the door, and I knock on the door again. Here I come. Yo, keep in mind, y'all, I told y'all this chick was gorgeous, beautiful. Keep that in mind. When she opened the door, when she opened the door, y'all, all this was bumped up. All this was bumped up. Blisters. You like Dante? What? 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 what what's going on? What? What you mean? It was all bumped up. This girl had herpes. All up on the mouth. All up on the lips. Before we even go on with this story right here, I want to let y'all know something. The Bible says something about fornication. If Dante would have been all up in her face, kissing all on her, I could have got that for being out here fornicating. The, God wrote the 10 commandments and one of them commandments is thou shalt not fornicate, right? That means having sex outside of marriage. And if I would have did something with that girl that night, well, I would have got exactly what I deserved. When she opened up that door, y'all, I was horrified, terrified. 
I'm looking at her like, what the? F she said, come on, come on. She grabbed my wrist like this, but I yanked back. And she was like, what's wrong with you? Y'all see how I'm looking? This is how I'm looking. I said, what's up with that? She was like, oh, uh, sometimes when I get stressed out, it it be uh, it flares up. And she's saying it like this is casual. Like, it, like this is a casual thing. Like, like it ain't nothing. I did not take, I didn't put no my foot over that threshold. By the way, y'all, I was staying at a hotel. Like I told you, man, Al used to run these streets and we spent a lot of time in Columbus and we'd be at a hotel, right? Unless we were sleeping at some chick's house that we met. And she knew where the hotel was at. Keep that in mind. So I'm saying, no, I'm out. I'm out. And she's like, what's wrong? What's going on? This and that, this and that, right? Fast forward. Now, this is where Dante go to Jackson Pike. Okay. So we go back. I get in the car and I'm telling Al, like, man, this girl got all these bumps on her mouth and all this type of stuff. He like, man, you dodged a bullet. You dodged a bullet, bullet. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, I dodged a bullet. That's why I get for being that's what I get for being so goddamn horny. And you people out there, y'all need to stop being so dang horny, man. Have some discipline. Because you could have got, you know how many men and women probably fell victim to what I could have fell victim to? Ooh. Just imagine. And I'm not I'm, I'm not sidetracking. This is a part of the story. We finna get to the prison talk. Imagine if you, and it's a lesson right here. Imagine when you finally find the one that that you, your soulmate, and y'all get married, and your wife or your husband say, let's do celibacy, but all this time, you know, you got a dark secret down there, and then it's time for celibacy to consummate your marriage, and then you have a breakout down there? Whew, woo-wee. Y'all better stop fornicating, man. Y'all better start having some discipline and stop, so, right? Anyway, so I get in the car and I say, man, we, we gone. We gone. So I'm telling him like, man, the chick ain't right, man. She got all these blisters and bumps and all that, right? So he like, yeah, you dodged a bullet. We get to the room. I want to take a nap. About two hours later, Boom, 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 boom. CPD, CPD. Columbus police is at the door, at the hotel door. Boom, boom, boom. For me not sleeping with her and she finding that her money was gone, she said that I broke into her house and robbed her. Now, we're going to fast forward to Jackson Pike. Everybody from Columbus, Ohio types. Matter of fact, everybody from Columbus, Ohio type 614 in the comment, in the comment section. And everybody else, wherever y'all are from, put your area code in the comment section. Y'all know I'm from Michigan, Flint, Michigan, to be particular. So I got to put that 810 in the comment section. So y'all put your area code in the comment section. But Columbus Finest, tell me you under arrest. They read me my rights after they done jacked me up, put me in handcuffs. Now we gonna fast forward to why we in Jackson Pike. And this is why I say, do not drop the soap. Now we all hear about this prison myth about dropping the soap. You, auto, you automatically think that when you drop the soap, somebody going to come up behind you and take your manhood. That's what we all think, right? But the real reason why you should not drop the soap is because if you only got one bar of soap and you drop that soap, you keep that soap on the ground. It's not because of you thinking a man going to try to take something from you. No. Do you know what happens on them? 
jail floors in the shower rooms. Dudes be in there doing the unthinkable. They be, I got to stay in the YouTube guidelines, but they be, let's just say they pleasure themselves and it skeets all over the floor. And then here you go playing with the soap and it falls out your hand and you better keep it down there. You got men in there that's not going in there with their shower shoes, bringing all type of stuff from, from um, the bullpen, from the pod into the shower. That's why you, you have to go in there with your shower shoes on. If the soap hit the flow, leave it there. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. If you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you want to continue to show your support of the Dante Show Network, make sure you bless that Cash App and or the PayPal. If you want your business or social media channel promoted, I charge $20 a video. Email me right here. Until next time, stay safe. Me, I grab the hammer and forget the clip. So I get out of the car and here go my dumb self walking up to the house like the big dummy I am. Next thing you know, three dudes come out of nowhere. Yeah, give it up, give it up, give it up. Look, now Dante caught. Put Back when I was about 20, 21, this is when that dating website came out called Plenty of Fish, POF. And me being who I was, that was always chasing after women, my homeboy called me, he was like, hey Dante, man, you ever heard about this website called POF? I'm like, nah, what's that? He was like, man, you can meet all type of chicks on here, man. Now, me getting a chick, that was never no, no issue at all, at all. Matter of fact, it was my job from the age of 16 to 20 that I meet a new chick every other day in my life. Yeah, I was out here living trifling and all that, but that was the old me. This is the new me, all right? So I'm like, what is this? He like, so basically you make a profile and um, after you make your profile, you get matched to other girls. And you know, you just write them and they write you back and y'all go on a date and you know, do what y'all do. So I'm like, all right, bet, that ain't, okay, let me let me check that out. So I check it out, I make the profile. And at this time, y'all, I was, I was living in Flint and I matched up with some chick from Pontiac. So I'm like, oh man, she looked dope. You know, she looked like she was like black and Arabic bad thing right so hold up oh i thought i heard something in the bushes back there anyway so you know i'm looking at her pictures i said okay okay she cute in them up so i get to writing her and she write me back so we like man look at this dang dog man hey, hold on hold on but anyway so she write me back and she like yeah um I want to see you and this and that, but I ain't got my own place. I'm like, oh, all right, well, shoot. Um, you know, we can go to the hotel. You know, I got wheels. You know, we can go to a hotel. That ain't nothing. She was like, well, you you want to go on a date or nothing? You want to go to the movies? I'm like, I mean, I mean, at this time, y'all, back, like I said, back in the day, I was kind of a player. So, I, you know, I was like buddy love. I was just trying to stick and move, right? So at this, that car at the corner. Y'all gotta forgive me. In my neighborhood, man, in Kentucky, right here, it's a lot of um, nosy white people around here, man. They all, every time I come outside trying to make a video, they always just start riding down the street. And But I'm gonna I'm tell y'all this though. Kentucky, it's a lot of good white people here though. It's a real, it's a lot of good white people out here though. But anyway, so she she like yeah um we we can go on a date or something right 
I said, I mean, we can grab something to eat and, you know, bring it back to the hotel or whatever. So she was like, okay, I guess so. So she was like, um, you got to pick me up from my grandma's house in Detroit. And I'm like, oh, man, I don't really feel like going to the, to the D. But I'm like, uh, uh, all right, all right, whatever. So, because she was bad, right? So I went down there. I got down there, right? I should have known better. I pulled up to a house that kind of looked like this right here. And let me tell y'all something. Whenever you get an intuition or a bad feeling about something or something that seemed too good to be true, please listen to your inner self. Listen to your inner self. Because, well, so I pulled up. And when I pulled up, I like pulled over like right there. And I'm calling her like, come on, I'm out, I'm out here, I'm out here. Next she know, she texts me back and she like, okay, here I come. So I'm sitting there, a minute go by, three minutes go by, five minutes go by. Next thing you know, I'm like, man, where this girl at? So I call her, I call her again. And I call her again. She ain't picking up the phone. So then I text her like, hey man, where you at? It's one of my neighbors. I'm like, where you at? She like, I'm out here. I'm outside. So I'm like, man, where is you at? She was like, I need for you to help me with something. Before I was a felon, you know, I kept that grip on me. So I'm thinking to myself like, Man, I'm in Detroit. This chick playing. I'm all right. I said, here I come. So I get the hammer. But usually when I used to drive, I take the hammer, I take the clip off the hammer and put the hammer in the glove compartment and keep the clip on me, right? So I can just go bam bam, right? So me, I grab the hammer and forget the clip. So I get out of the car and here go my dumb self. Walking up to the house like the big dummy I am. Next thing you know, three dudes come out of nowhere. Yeah, give it up. Give it up. Give it up. Look, now Dante caught, put his dick out, right? Just like this. They they going through my pockets, pat me down. All that. Took my wallet. All that. Only had what? Man, what, what, what he got? What he got? Man, he, he got a couple dollars. Man, this dude only got one, two, three dollars, four dollars. Hey. Y'all only got about five dollars to my name right now. And you know who fault that is? It's y'all fault. Because y'all haven't leaned on that cash app. Y'all ain't leaned on that PayPal. But um, that's a whole nother situation. But let me tell y'all something right quick. So they had your boy jammed up. Took my wallet. Took the couple dollars that I had in my wallet. Took my phone. So while they got me hemmed up, they like, yeah, yeah, you thought you were about to get something. You thought you were about to get something. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something. I'm going to tell you the game that they played, the military mind game that they played on me. But before we do that, I'm going to give a special shout out to Calvin Houston, um, Michael Patronock, and Felicia, Felicia Bradley, and um, who else? Eva Monroe and Damien. Um... Thank y'all for blessing the cash app. Shout out to y'all. But, um, yeah. So, they tell him, like, yeah, you stupid. You stupid. That was my little sister that, that had you on the phone. So, they got me, like, they got me, they got me spread eagle style, y'all. Just like this against the bandit house. So, they just going through all my stuff. Tell me, like, yeah, you stupid. We had my little sister pose as this girl they basically the only thing they got from me was a cell phone a wallet and a couple of dollars right so all i'm thinking is like man because i have to grip like right here because i had the hoodie on but i had a grip and i was just thinking to myself should i bust this thing you know why because when they had me like this it was like cuffed like right here it was a little 22 so 
when I thought about it, when they turned their back to walk off, I had the grip and I realized the clip wasn't in there. So not only they jumped in the car and they took my car too. So now here I go on seven mile and grass shit out here stuck on bowl. So then I end up calling my sister. She cussed me out talking about that's what you get for chasing these girls and all this and that, all this stuff. I ain't trying to hear. I just, man, just come pick me up, man. Um, for you cats out there that like to do internet dating, and there's nothing wrong with internet dating. You know, we in different times now. Me, if I wasn't married, I would prefer to meet women face to face. But anybody can be anybody um, behind that keyboard. But um, just word of advice, man. If if you out here meeting new people and stuff, man, be careful out here, man. Be careful. And, and actually, the reality is, this wouldn't have never happened to me if I wasn't being so goddamn horny. So, you know, the Bible says that if a man look at a woman and he lusts out, lust after the woman, then he committed fornication. So, I was fornicating. I was sinning. I had no business sinning. But, hey, the wages of, the wages of sin is death. And, uh... Dante better be glad that his life was spared. Yeah, they took my car. Yeah, they took my wallet. Yeah, they took the couple dollars. But, hey, it is what it is. This is the Dante Show Network, y'all. Check this out. This Friday, I'm dropping a crazy story. Crazy story. So, y'all make sure y'all be in attendance. Hit that notification bell, too, so y'all will not miss none of my videos. Also, I got the merchandise, y'all. All you have to do is click, click the link in the description. It say merch. Click that link. Y'all can get y'all get y'all Dante merchandise. And uh, if y'all if y'all can, I need for y'all to lean on that cash app or that PayPal. And with that, y'all, this is the Dante Show Network. Y'all know I love y'all. I'm out. Don't do this to me, man. Don't do this to me, man. Man, give me my stuff, man. All right, man, hold on, hold on. So then block cut him again. Ah, man, come on. Bro, don't do this to me. Bro, don't do it to me. Please, bro. Don't, don't poke me no more, please. If nobody is going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. If you don't got the commissary, or the money to cover your debt, do not gamble, do not bet. We call that ass betting. When you gambling or betting with something that you don't got, when you know you ain't got that commissary in your sale and you out here at the gambling table or you out there on the basketball, well, let me get to the story. So there's this cat by the name of Antoine. And yes, that is him in the thumbnail. Antoine was from Flint, Michigan. You know, I got a speech impediment, so let me say that again. Antoine was from Flint, Michigan, 810, all right? Antoine was one of them type of dudes that loved to play basketball. He loved it. In fact, I'm not even gonna lie. Antoine had, he had skills. He could, he could dribble, he could shoot. However, there was another dude out here on the yard that could play way better than him. Now, this dude could have went to the NBA. Long story short, matter of fact, hold on. <clears throat> Do y'all want the long version or the short version of the story? We finna do a poll right quick. Do y'all like when I tell stories that are 10 minutes long? 15 minutes long, 20 minutes long, 25 minutes long, or 30 minutes long. Let me know in the comment section because that's gonna determine how I start telling these stories for y'all because y'all are the audience 
and I'm just here to entertain y'all. So this is your platform, the Dante Show Network. Y'all tell me what y'all want me to do. Now let's get back to it. So he like, I, um, dude, the other dude that knew how to play basketball real good, his name was Block. Um, Block and Antoine playing one-on-one. -on -one. They going at it. But like I said, Block was a little bit better than Antoine. So he was like, all right, check this out. I bet you two bags of hot Cheetos and five Pepsis. And he was like, all right, bet. So they bought it. Boom, 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 boom. Block beat them and beat them bad. They went to 11. The score was six to 11, win by two. So he like, all right, man, all right. Uh, Antoine like, all right, so... All right, so I owe you two, four. All right, double it. Double or nothing. Double or nothing. Block thinking Antoine got loads of commissary. He ain't got it. He like, all right, come on, run it back. They go, boom, 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 boom. Now, it's, they going neck and neck, like point for point. Long story short, Block end up winning again. Twine gets so mad and throw the basketball and it storm off. Now, when he threw the basketball, it hit a punk. This punk had a husband, had a man in there. Boom. Ow! Why you hit me for? Man, he, who, who hit you? He hit me. He hit me. Hey, man. Hey, Twine. Hey, Twine. Come here, man. Twine, come here. Try and keep walking. All right, I'm going to see you in the pod. You going to hit my lady? You going to hit my lady like that? All right, don't even worry about it. It's all right, baby. Come here. Come here. He hit me. He hit me. Now, listen, y'all. I'm watching this whole thing go down. You see this man hugging another man, calling this man his wife, their husband and wife. He hit me. What you gonna do about it? It's okay, baby. I got you. I got you. Don't even worry about it. When we get back to the pot, I'm gonna handle that. Now, Block hears this. And Block go up to dude and like, hey, listen. I know you gonna do whatever you gonna do. But I need for you to fall back on that until I get my commissary for him. Dude like, man, listen. I don't care what y'all got going on about what he owe you. But when I get in that pod, I'm taking them out. So I, it's best that you go there and go get yours before I go up there and get mine. Dude, block like, hey, man, all right, all right, man, listen, I'm not trying to beef with you. I ain't trying to get involved in what you got going on. But, man, man, hey, listen, listen. I'm, listen, my bottom line is this. This is my, he one of them old school cats. My bottom line, and, and block like, 25 dude like 44 my bottom line is this when i go in that pot i'm gonna do something to your partner i don't care what he owe you i'm gonna i'm gonna get mine don't nobody at this time y'all he get him at don't nobody in this facility gonna touch what's mine this is my wife right here and that's my bottom line anybody even look at my wife wrong that's just what it's going to be. Now, you can go over there and go get yours now. But when I go hit that pot, I'm going to go see your partner. Dude, like, all right, man. All right, man, whatever. And dude, like, all right, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. So he walk off. Block walk off. And he instantly go to the pot. He like, hey, Twan, I, I need my stuff right now, man. He like, man, I ain't got it. I ain't got it. Block like, what you mean you ain't got it? Man, here, here. He got two bags of hot Cheetos, man. That, that's all I got. He kind of like threw it out. Like, here, man. He like, dude, this ain't what? Dog, I need my stuff. He like, man, what you going to do about it, man? I ain't got it. I ain't got it. What you want me to do? So you out here betting? You out here betting? Huh? Man, listen, man. I'm going through enough right now. Man, I'm not trying to hear that, what you going through, man. What you mean what, what you going through? Man, I, I need mice, man. I need mice. So Twan like, man, listen, dog. 
man, I ain't got nothing for you, man. I got to get, it to, I'll get it to you. And we're going to have to make a payment arrangement or something. But, Cause I ain't got it. So block like, man, you got this dude about to come in here. Probably about to stab dude. Dude about to go to the whole party, get transferred. Man, I, I'm not taking, I'm, I'm not taking his loss. I'm not taking no, I'm not, I'm not taking no L, man. Yo, I, I need me, man. I, I, I need mines, man. Cause if I would have lost, I would have paid you, man. I would have paid you, man. Man, I need my stuff. He like, Twan like, man, listen, man, we're going to have to fight or something. He was like, what? I, right, I'll be back. I'll be back. Let me tell y'all something. When you in prison, even in the streets, when a man says, I'll be back, especially in the penitentiary, and y'all just got them arguing, you do not under no circumstance let that man leave out of your reach or eyesight. Because nine times out of ten, he about to go get that SOJ, that sword of justice. And he about to come back and y'all about to get it on. In the pot that I was in, in this particular pot, we called this pot the Terra Dome. Where you can get your dome piece cracked wide open. And this situation right here was the perfect storm for somebody getting a dome piece cracked wide open to the white meat. So he said, I'll be back, I'll be back, wait right there. As soon as he said that, Antoine turned around, witness cell, he grabbed him a piece of steel. And Block went to his cell and got him a piece of steel. Now, Twan was on the second tier. Block was at the first tier. And he could see him like diagonally. So Twan is standing there at the tier looking down on him. And Block looking up at him holding his steel. Now, you didn't see that he had the steel because he had it like tucked in his pants. But he was gripping. Now, everybody coming back from the yard. And the dude that had a punk in there, which was his wife, he comes in with his wife. And his wife like, oh, no, you ain't got to do that now. No, I don't want you to go to the hole. He like, no, no, ain't nobody going to disrespect. Now, listen. Twan is so caught up in what he caught up in, he done forgot that he threw this ball and hit the, he probably don't even know, he probably didn't even know that he hit um, this dude's wife. But nevertheless, he feel the friction because dude looking up there as he talking, looking towards him like, yeah, yeah, I'ma see him, I'ma see him. And he, the, uh, the, the, the gay guy like, Nah, baby, don't do it. Don't do it. It's okay. Just let it go. Just let it go. Uh, just let it go. And he like, man, no, man, no. Ain't nobody going to be playing with you out here like that. Ain't no, I'll die behind this, man. I'll die behind you, man. So everybody looked like, man, what the heck going on? The guard come over there like, hey, what's going on, man? Because the guard thought that these two was arguing. You know, the wife and the husband was arguing. He was like, man, man, forget this, man. All right, man. All right, man. Hey. Hey, man, you ever touch my wife again? You even look at my wife again? It's over. It's over. That's my bottom line. My bottom line is you ever touch her again, I'm going to do something to you, man. And so she pushing him to the cell. He's like, all right, all right, man, come on, man. Let me go. Let me go. So he go to the cell. So Twilight, man, what is he talking about? I, so then he, he said, he looking down like, like, man, what the heck going on? Like. Why dude just trying to bark down on me like that? So then Block like, I need my stuff, man. I need my stuff. I need me. So, what do Twan say? Man, come get it in blood. Come get it in blood. Ugh. He like, all right. All right. Get it in blood. All right. I got you. I got you. So, he go back in his cell. When he come out of cell, he got his big state issue black coat on. Now, when somebody got their coat on in a dorm and they got their boots on and they laced all the way 
all the way up, suited and booted, they, they about to get into something. So here he come, he running up the stairs. When he get on the tier, Antoine back back in his cell. And he like, come on, come on. So block like this, he get in front of Antoine's cell. Antoine standing there like this, but he not showing what he got. Matter of fact, he got it like this. Like, come on, come on, come on. He pump faking, he ain't got no sword of justice. He pump faking. Block wasn't pump faking. Block had that sword of justice out. So it's a standoff. He like, yeah, come on. I got you. I got you. Come on in here. Come on in here. So Twan, like, come on, come on, come on. So Block just hurry up and run up in there. Now you can't pump fake. Now it's on. So now Block in there with the sword of justice, like Michael Myers coming up over top with it. Like, man, don't make me do this to you. Don't make me do, but dude, Twan, like, man, I, I got you, man. He said, man, you pump faking? You pump faking? You, man, dog, stop playing with me, man. Get my commissary, man. Get, give me my stuff, man. Get, he like, man, dog. Block, like, you know what? Sweet, cut him. Ah, oh, man, come on, man. Don't do this to me, man. Don't do this to me, man. Man, give me my stuff, man. All right, man, hold on, hold on. So then Block cut him again. Like, ah, man, come on. Bro, don't do this to me. Bro, don't do it to me, please, bro. Don't, don't poke me no more, please. Come on, bro, don't do this. Man, get me my commissary, man. Get me my stuff. All right, man, hold on, hold on, man. I ain't got that thing. Man, he poked him again. Ah, man, please don't, man. Oh, man, here, 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 everything, man. Man, this ain't enough, man. So he gave him like 10 packs of ramen noodles, two honey buns, another pack of hot Cheetos, and like three Mountain dudes. This is not even half of the debt that he owed. So he like, come on, bro, that's all I got, man. I promise to God, man. I swear to God, man. I'm going to give you your stuff, man. I promise I'll give you your stuff, man. The play don't, don't pull me no more, man. I'm done, man. I'm dying, man. I'm dying, please, man. Please don't, don't cut me no more. Man, hey, Twan, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, man. You better have the rest of my stuff, man. I'm telling you, dog. Have the rest of my stuff, man. I'm not playing with you. And if you try to check in, I promise, man, it ain't nowhere that you can go in this prison. It ain't nowhere you can go in this prison without me. I'm going to check in if you want to. Check in if you want to. I'm telling you. I'm a... So you're like, all right, bro. All right, bro. Please just don't, please don't cut me no more. Please don't. So Block wiped this knife off. Stuck it back in his jacket. Came out. Looked to his left. Looked to his right. Made sure the no guards was around. And he left out of there. So now you got Twine all laid up on a bunk. Like, man, I think I'm going to die. I'm gonna die. So he just laid down. So another cat came into Twine's cell to check on him. And I guess with the conversation, dude that came in the cell with him, told him like, man, it ain't nothing but, you know, a little flesh wrong, man. You ain't gonna die, man. Just, here, put some alcohol right there and, you know, put some band-aids right there. You'll be good. Now, it was about 9.30 where we had to do count before we had to get locked down. When the guard got to Twine's cell, man, I got to talk to you, Deb. All right, I'll talk to you about the count. All right, Deb. Around 11 o'clock. Man, I got stabbed, man. I need for y'all to help me, man. I fear for my life, man. This dude trying to kill me in here. Guard, get on get on the walkie talkie, call that cold. We already locked down. The guards come up in there, grab him out, get the cart, grab all his property, he gone. As dude walking down the tier, he go block looking like, you better not snitch, you better not snitch. Let me tell y'all something. Where I was at, if you get convicted of stabbing somebody, why in the inside, that's a new 
charge. It's a street charge. You actually go to court in front of a judge and there's a 99.99% chance that you are going to be found guilty and you will be convicted. And there's another five years that's going to be added to your sentence. So this, so when Block would tell him, you better not snitch, he was kind of really saying that out of fear. Yeah, because he didn't want that extra five years of him getting sent up the way to a maximum, super max prison, where it's 23 and 1. Yeah. So, the whole point of this video is to let y'all know what not to do while in prison. And what not to do in prison is to gamble of what you ain't got to gamble with. Do not bet on your butt. And what I mean by that, don't be out here ass bet. Meaning you ain't got the you ain't got the commissary of money to pay your debt. Because you might end up like Antoine getting, oh, please don't poke me no more. Please don't hurt me no more. Yeah, I'm out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. If you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you want to continue to show your support of the Dante Show Network, make sure you bless that Cash App and or the PayPal. If you want your business or social media channel promoted, I charge $20 a video. Email me right here. Until next time, stay safe.